everyone doing on this fan-fucking-tastic Sunday chat? We are live early today. How are y'all fucking doing? I just crushed a goddamn breakfast. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. A little happy St. Patty's in the fucking chat. I'm pretty sure it's St. Patrick's Day, right? Let me double-check that shit. St. Patrick's Day. It's today, right? Yep. No? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. The happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Macy and Minecraft for the sub. Siji, Dogman, YB, Jade, Five Star Arcade, Fatali, Ince, Michael for the sub. Damn, if it's St. Patty's Day, I might not take a mini shield. If it's St. Patty's Day, I feel like we got to do some other shit for St. Patty's Day. I forgot it was St. Patrick's Day today. I went to Rolling Yat Loud yesterday and I saw Post Malone. That's pretty cool. Uh, Foxy for the three, Jazzy for the sub, Bricer for the three. Weird question, but why, if we all die, do we see stars in the sky? What's the point of stars existing in our lives if we know we can never reach them? What? Because the universe isn't made around us. We're a fucking, we're an evolved, hyper-intelligent animal on Earth out of billions and billions of planets and stars, an inconceivable basically infinite universe exists right and the stars are there because they're there right they're not there for us it sucks yeah we're all gonna die before we go pull some guardians of the galaxy type shit i'd love to be alive when fucking star lord is is a reality and i can fucking hyper warp to different planets you know that'd be fucking pretty cool but, you know, we live in 2024, so that's not probably going to fucking happen. You might be able to go to the moon one day, you know, if you're a billionaire. But <laughs> uh, you're probably you're probably never going to leave Earth, right? If we're being real. If you live in the planet, if you live on Earth right now, you're probably never going to leave Earth. You might be able to orbit the planet at some point, but, like, that would be... You got to spend a lot of money on that. Minecraft, uh, Macy for the sub, July for the sub. Are they just there to be there? What's your view on it? I think that we are inconceivably small. Uh, and I think people think that they're the center of the universe. And I think that they think humans are the center of the universe. When in reality, we don't fucking matter. Like, at all. Like, we... In, in the realm of the universe, we are fucking nothing. Right? And so it seems like we're so important. But that's why when you look up, you realize we're not. Uh, Jazzy, Semi for the sub, Perry for the three. I haven't been able to donate for a while. I love the streams. So say thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Dankle, for the three. Hasher, Rima, Ace is stealing your videos on YouTube, also editing them. I told them to stop. I think they, I think they did, uh, because they liked my comment. I told, I always give them a warning for people that just straight rip my content. Yeah, he stopped. Um, because I'm not going to, like, copyright strike somebody or, like, take down their videos or anything if they, like, upload my content and, and I never warned them about it. Uh, I think it's obvious that you shouldn't just rip people's videos. Like, I do reactions, but I'm also adding shit, whereas, like, that guy was literally just re-uploading my fucking videos. Um, but I, I just told him, I was like, if you do it again, I'm gonna have to fucking take down the videos. He liked it, he stopped. Uh, if he does it again, then I'll take it down, but, you know, I always give somebody a warning, because I don't want to hurt their YouTube channel, you know? Rye Rye for the three, water for the sub. I mean, it's the same thing with me when I've reacted to videos. Some creators don't like when you react to their videos, so if they don't want me to react to it, I'll take the video down. Stays for the sub, vibes for the three. I'm Irish and I'm hyped at St. Patrick's Day. It's a huge celebration over here in Ireland. What do you guys do in Ireland for St. Patrick's Day? Just get drunk? I feel like that's probably most Irish people. Uh, opinion on T. Nichols. We already talked about that like five times yesterday. I'm not, we're not, we're not getting into that fucking 45 minute convo again. Uh, somebody said he uploaded a video, but then I clicked it and it was privated, so I don't know what happened there or if it glitched or he wanted to re-upload or change or tweak something, but, uh, I know he's uploading, like, an apology video or slash, like, um, not necessarily apology, but him talking about it. Uh, what I'm gonna say is, instead of spamming at me to fucking watch it and tell you what I think, uh, you should probably watch it yourself and then think for yourself, uh, on what you think, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't understand why people go to creators and they're like, tell me what you, what your opinion is and I'm going to make that my opinion. No. Watch the video, right, when he does it, and then come up with your own conclusion. I already talked about it. 
um to the point where i was like i i mean i i don't know all the details but i i saw the screenshot uh shit that he talked about as well as his uh slideshow stuff uh but that didn't really go that much in depth into it i just watched it it was privated when i clicked on it so i don't know if it's up now again or something but teal for the three it's my birthday happy birthday Ant for the three says hi joe Bo, and lawson for the five been a while sorry if you said something are we watching the mike and jake fight Oh, am I, am I watching it? Yes. I thought you said, are we watching it? I was going to say, you think I'm going to fucking stream that? Dude, do you guys understand copyright? Because sometimes people will ask me to, like, stream NFL games or something like that. And I'm like, dude, do you realize, like, I can't just, I can't just, like, play movies on, like, on stream. Like, that's that that's so fucking illegal. Like, I they would, they would ban my account if I was just like, all right, guys, hey, let's, uh, why don't we just start watching the fucking Star Wars films just on fucking stream? You could do it with, like, some shit, like like Shark Tank. Like, there's, like, some videos where if it's, like, uploaded on YouTube, it's kind of a gray area where it's, like, copyrighted, but it's not necessarily that big of a deal because it's on a public forum rather than, like, being, like, a paywalled content. But, um, like, movies and live sports and shit, I, I can't stream unless I have uh, an offer for that. I do have a sponsor lined up to watch uh, live uh, bare knuckle boxing, uh, UFC fights and stuff. Not UFC, but like MMA fights. Uh, I don't know if it's fully going to go through. And sumo wrestling. Would you guys do watch parties of sumo wrestling? They hit me up about it and I was like, uh, fuck yeah, I'd watch sumo wrestling. That seems fucking sick. Uh, that I don't know. I wouldn't know what's going on outside of them having to fucking push each other out of the ring. But, you know, that'd be pretty badass to watch fucking two guys that are 450 pounds try and fucking push each other out. Jesse and Bubbly for the sub, DJ for the three. I want to, I want you to know I really love your content and stuff for a minute. Even though I don't watch, uh, often I still, uh, want to make sure I'm sub to you so I can help you prosper. Be blessed. Thank you for the fucking three and thank you for the nice message. Uh, DJ Mint. It's Dark, Bri, Bri, Stanley, French, Shan for the sub, Evil for the three. I don't care why Queso go live on TikTok if him get banned all the time. Jesus. You got to retype your message. I, I know what you said, but like, I don't get why Queso go live on TikTok if him get banned all time. Alad for the sub, Zorio for the three. Because uh, it helps bring viewers to his other content. I love watching you baked as fuck. Thank you. French the 709 and Big Mac for the sub. Anyways, chat. Um, we're doing, uh, just start reacting, bro. Shut the, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Oh my God, he posted a me canyon video. Hold the fuck up. He posted a me canyon video case okay, so We're adding that. That was posted 33 minutes ago. Holy shit. I was y'all were saying watch Meat Canyon. I was gonna say you're in luck. We're already watching a Papa Meat video later on. We're gonna watch Russia's most haunting mystery by Papa Meat. But he also uploaded on the Meat Canyon YouTube channel about queso, so we'll watch that. But uh, Julian and Trua for the sub BDW for the three. Uh, Officer and Luckily for the sub. What did T Nichols even do? I'm so lost. Look it up. Look it up. Look it up. I'm not. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be an informed dude. You have Google, right? You have Google. You could go boop 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 boop. Type shit in, right? Fuck. Oh, my God. What is with people, like, needing me to be an informant of this shit? Have you seen it? Yes. Yes. Can we get that out of the way? Yes, I've seen the T. Nichols thing. I've seen the T. Nichols thing. We talked about it, like, five times yesterday. I've gotten asked about it, like, a hundred times. I know it's an important topic, but, like, holy piss. I'm. What am I going to repeat myself every ten minutes about it when the new kid comes in here and fucking asks me about it? Opinion on Xavier Wolf, the rapper? Like, his music or him? Because I know he also got into some, like, domestic violence type shit. Uh, Jack and Luckily for the sub. Or Lucky for the sub. Officer Goofy for the sub. Um, anyways, we're doing reacts today. Uh, we'll start out with the Me Canyon video. I didn't even know he uploaded. So, W Chatters for letting me know about that. If you have any videos you want me to react to or games you want me to play, video scotch tab, game scotch tab on Discord, X my, exclamation point, disc, X, fuck! Exclamation point, Discord mods, pin the Discord link. Uh, if you have any videos you want me to watch or games you want me to play, send those there. Jack and 3X Tissy for the sub. Uh, we're going to be starting out uh, with the Me Canyon video. Then we're going to be watching Inside Out 2 official trailer. New Mr. Beast video. Watched it yesterday, buddy. Yeah, you're late to the game here, pal. Evil Green for the 3. Uh, I bad it tapping got to point where I don't care. 
BDW for the three. Sorry, I wasn't trying to get chat going on about it. You it, you, you, were, you didn't get chat going on about it. It's it, like fucking every 10th chat is about this shit. Okay. Uh, but we're doing this. The Inside Out 2 trailer. Uh, the cup video. Your family is crazy. Newlyweds uh, truth or drink. Moments before disaster. Cop body cam video. Twitch is evolving. A penguins video about the new TOS guidelines. Get into like that shit. You could see the preview there. Uh, delete Airbnb. Bring back hotels. Um, what is going on with America's Got Talent? Why modern movies suck? Uh, and Russia's Most Haunting Mystery. Whether or not we get through all these today, I don't know. Uh, but are we ready to fucking lock in here? Yakinkin's back? Yakinkin is back. Yakinkin was on like a four-week break. AKA a four-week brand. Or not brand, ban. Uh, but now, you know, he's, he's back. He's better than ever. Whether or not he survives this, I don't know. Chat, my forehead's looking bigger than normal to me. Does my forehead look bigger today? Bro, hold the fuck up. Ah, oh, nah. Nah, it's the same. It's the same. That's how I measure it. That's how I measure if I'm balding, by the way. Uh, I go like this. And I measure the gap between my eyebrow and um, my hand. To see if, if it's extended, that means I'm balding. Fuck, I hate my hair, dude. I'm just gonna get a fucking... I'm just gonna get a fucking buzz cut soon. You shouldn't fit more than two fingers on your forehead. Chat, how many fingers is your forehead? Four. Some people's are three. Some people's are five. Fucking buddy... Buddy said two fingers? Whose forehead is this big? No one's. God, am I balding? I'm not getting into this shit again. Hold up. All right, we're ready. We're ready. Four, three. I feel like three to five is the is the normal the normal amount of fingers it takes to cover your forehead. It also depends how big your fucking hands are, right? If you got tiny ass hands, it's gonna be more. Uh, Puperity and XP for the sub. Um, retro for the sub, BDW for the three. All right, let's lock in here, chat. Uh, Meat Canyon video about Queso. Uh, so this should be interesting. Let's go there. Enhanced bitrate. God, who the fuck would buy YouTube Premium? Cringe. <laughs>
Oh my god, he gets more viewers than you, dumbass. Yeah, he gets more English-speaking viewers. Yes, people in Japan speak English, but that doesn't mean they're gonna necessarily watch Queso. Somebody said you're a spineless pussy. <laughs> Did you just growl? Yeah, something like that. You're getting too big. If you grow anymore, you will implode the earth and destroy humanity as we know it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Banned. You all called the military? Are you serious, bro? Come on, the density of this madness, it, it, it's reaching critical mass. If this continues, it will create- Dude, what's fucked up, bro? He's not even that big. Like, I, it's like an ongoing joke. But like, Queso, like, Queso's not that big of a guy. Like, he, he's like beefy, but he's not- I wouldn't say- Like, if I pass Queso in public, I wouldn't be like, oh. Like I'd just be like, yeah, that's a that's a big guy, you know. Like he's a fu he's just a big guy. Like I'm not gonna be like, oh, he's fat. Get a chain reaction resulting in a black. He's like 250. That's not big. I know people that are like 420 pounds. Like I know people that are way bigger than Queso. Oh, not only humanity will perish, but a very galaxy as well. <laughs> It was our fault. We provoked him, and now we're all going to die. No, 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 sweetie, don't say that. Don't say that. We did this, Mom. We did this. I don't think the average case of viewer would would have would be like. Oh, we did. This is. This was us. We we made too many big jokes, and now the Earth's gonna implode on itself. <laughs> this video just end with the universe collapsing. Be a black hole. <laughs> oh my god. I want to see the comments. I'm so glad you drew him like a one by one Lego brick. Bro, the, the fucking video where he's like, Stop saying I look like a one by one Lego piece. I don't look like a one by one Lego piece. I gotta look that up. What do you mean, bros built like a one by one Lego piece? What do you mean? <laughs> Bro, the way he says that. Bros built like a one by one Lego piece. What even is a one by one Lego piece? Oh my god. Those are the worst Lego pieces, though. The one by ones. Especially, you ever you ever build in a Lego set and you put the one by one Lego piece in the wrong fucking spot, and then you have to get it out to put like to move it, but it's like it's just there forever now. You're not because you're not gonna be able to wedge your fingers under there and the fucking stupid things they give you to grab it. Oh, it doesn't work. Like the mini tiles, especially if it doesn't have like the little uh, Lego piece on top. It's like one of those flat tiles. Oh, it's a fucking impossible. All right, next. Ellie and chill for the sub 3x Tissy for the ex Ecstasia. How do you say your name for the five? What happened to Manifest? Love your streams, Joey. Uh, Dino and Retro for the sub. Pooperty for the sub. XP for the sub. Uh, Manifest is a mod. Manifest and Crucible aren't my mods anymore. And they haven't been in my stream in like eight months. Not eight months. Probably like six months. Inside out to trailer. 
I haven't even seen Inside Out 1. Have you guys seen Inside Out 1? I think I might have seen like this five minutes of it. This is the one where there are the fucking emotions, right? And it's like the angry guy and the sad dude. It's a good movie. Okay. Joy. What was that one movie you guys said was fucking terrible? I feel like that's too broad of a thing for me to say. It was like a Pixar movie. Turning Red. I feel like my we were rating like di like not Disney. I don't know if it's a Disney movie, but like animated movies. And everybody said everybody in my chat said Turning Red was the worst movie they've ever seen. G Dog for the sub. Turning Red was good. Then why was my whole chat saying it was fucking ass? Emoji movie. Well, the emoji movie. Yeah, everybody knows this shit. Coming to you live in Riley's mind. Make some noise. Yay. Sadness is in the house. It's anger. We gotta get our mouth guard, people. Fear. No, no, that's not Alice. Ugh. Disgust. Glad to have her on our team. Our little girl's growing up so fast. Ow. Sorry. It should be nothing but smooth sailing. For Hello. Yeah, I remember when I had braces and they would let me choose the color for my braces. What color would y'all choose? I was just blue. The motherfuckers that chose the uh, clear ones, it just made you look like you had, like, dirty teeth. I don't know. Like, they, they, it, it would sometimes work, but the majority of people that got clear bands, when they would smile, it looked like they didn't brush their teeth and they had, like, plaque all over their teeth. So I would always get blue. I would get yellow, clear, cyan, white, gold. They let you get gold bands. I always got, like, blue or red. So I remember one day I, interma I intermingled them. I was like, can I have, like, both? And they were like, yeah. I was like, oh, fucking sick. Dr. Poopy and Ben for the sub, G Dog for the sub. It should be nothing but smooth sailing. For Hello. Ah! I'm anxiety. Where can I put myself? A new emotion. Oh, I'm sorry. We wanted to make such a good first impression. Uh, what do you mean, we? Uh, I'm envy. Oh, look at your hair. Oh, yeah, not happening. That's on we. On what? It's what you would call the boredom. What's your name, big fella? That's embarrassment. Welcome to headquarters, embarrassment. Mm. Oh, we're doing a fit. No. Oh, <gasps> no. Going mm. high. Oh. Why do they make embarrassment look like that? Oh. Mm. You got a real sweaty palm there, buddy. <laughs> look, we all have a job to do. I plan for the future. Oh, you my God. Y'all just saying queso. This is going to be a hard watch. Yeah, no. I, could, I feel like this is going to be a harder watch than the first one, bro. They're throwing in anxiety and embarrassment. This is going to be like a day in the life of a fucking high schooler. Sit with us. These girls are so cool. We can't let her know we're excited. I got this. Uh, Joy, I'm just curious. Maybe um, I could Thank you. Help. Not now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <gasps> That's not going to haunt us for the rest of our lives at all. Oh, you feel it all right. I know change is scary. Let's do this. Hey, Riley. But we need new friends or we'll be totally alone in high school. Out with the old, in with the new. Bro, can we please have this movie, but, like, she kills someone? Like, this, but, like, let's have, let's have, like, a different perspectives, and let's have Inside Out in the mind of, like, a serial killer. Like, that would be, that would be, oh my god. Like, imagine, ima it would just be, the emotions would be fucking crazy up there, dude. It would be like fucking, oh my god, what's going on? There would be no balance. Or like, it would be hilarious, dude. She's playing hockey, and she like goes for a stomp, and like somehow just ends up slicing somebody's head off. And then they all just go, Oh my god! And they start freaking the fuck out. Need new friends or we'll be totally alone in high school. That would be old in with the new. Riley's life requires more sophisticated emotions than all of you. Ah! You can't just bottle us up. We are so And it'd be like FNAF, dude. They could be like it would be like inside the mind of a serial killer and like all the emotions are like it's like fully controlled by like anger and one other one. And they, like, need to go get embarrassment or something. And, like, embarrassment's, like, stuck in, the like, the depths of their mind. And they're like, we need to go get him out. 
and they're like trying to fucking go. Oh my god, is that what's happening in this? Pressed emotion. <laughs> Let Operation New oh. Riley begin. Uh, you aren't packed yet. I'm the worst. <laughs> well, that's a preview of the next ten years. Come on, Riley needs us. Have I ever steered you wrong before? Many times. <laughs> It's the sarcasm. Sarcasm. Boy, are we so lucky we ran into you guys. Boy, are we so Where's like the addiction emotion? Or something like that. They got to throw that into the ring. For the kids that are like ripping neck sticks in the bathroom. Like where is he? Just fucking scratching his neck and shit. He's like fucking. Fucking just sitting in the corner like come on man. Ask you to use the bathroom. Oh, lucky we ran into you guys. Wow. Those guys are jerks. Wow. Those guys are jerks. Addiction's not an emotion? Okay, buddy. Like, what? what an emo uh, the dope. What the fuck do you want me to say, bro? What? Uh, uh, okay, then, yeah, all the emotions are addicted to nicotine. Let's fucking add that into the loop. Okay, yeah, addiction's not an emotion. Right? I was trying to make it a joke. Okay, yeah, all the emotions now don't care about what emotion they are. They're just fucking addicted to nicotine. June 14th. I feel like summer movie On releases are always just weird. Like, I don't know if I would want to have a movie release in the summer. Like, who the hell goes and watches movies in the middle of fucking June? You know? I think the best time to release a movie is, like, October through... January. We're like right now. October through March. Best time to release a movie. April through August. Terrible time to release a movie. Or like when they release movies on Christmas. Have you ever seen shit like that? When they're like coming out this Christmas. Like bitch who the fuck's gonna go see Despicable Me 2 on Christmas Day? No. No. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna play with my Nerf gun. Thank you. Did you like the movie The Batman? Yeah, that shit was fire. I can't wait for the next one. Robert Pattinson did a fucking great job playing Batman. It was the first Batman movie where I wasn't cringe, uh, or I wasn't cringing actively whenever they went. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I have to stop. I have to stop vengeance. I'm Batman. That's every Batman ever. And then Robert Pattinson actually comes in, and it's like they actually have a fucking character now, and he's like a human being, rather than some dickhead in a fucking bat costume just going, I'm Batman. Batman. A Gotham City needs me. And then he just rolls over fucking 50 innocent people. I'm not allowed to use guns. The Joker. The Vengeance. Gotham City needs my help. He runs over... A fucking, uh, uh, just a pack of third graders just mows them down. They're, they've all been crushed. One of them survives, but he's going to be paralyzed for the rest of his fucking life. And then, and then he goes, Ugh. That was, I didn't, I didn't intend on that. But it's, it's for the greater good. I needed to stop the Joker. And then he doesn't kill the Joker. He just has a long, drawn out conversation with him. And then the Joker gets away and he goes, Bah. Bah. Gotham City needs me once again. And then runs over second graders, right? Now Gotham City just it just has no one in great... It, there's just a two-year gap that no one fucking exists because Batman just killed all of them. Right? And then when he actually stops the Joker finally... It's like he still just stands there while the Joker's like blowing up people and shit like that. G Dog for the three, Papa for the three. The city needs me. The city needs me. Ill in the clip for the sub. Sky for the five. What's up, Joe? Wanted to say keep up the, the good ass streams. You're the best streamer on God. Seer for the three. El Patron for the three. Hope you're having a good day. Just took two blinkers to watch the stream. Ben, Dr. Poopy, G Dog, and Chill for the sub. Dude, Batman is literally if Elon Musk decided to go to New York City and start fighting crime. Or like Newark, New Jersey. Like, 
Batman is Elon Musk driving a fucking Tesla Cybertruck in a motorcycle and wearing a fucking suit of carbon fiber armor and just like having no training whatsoever and just like murder, like maybe catching one criminal, but in the process actually murdering like four small families. Perry for the three. Dark Knight is the best Batman movie ever. Christian Bale's a good Batman. It's probably one of the best, my favorite movie ever, movies ever. Christian Bale did a decent job. My favorite Batman movie, I don't know if it's The Dark Knight. What's the one where they rob the bank? And the and they start out with the Joker robbing the bank. And it has, um and the guy killed himself. What's his name? What's his name? I don't know. That's The Dark Knight. Okay, that one's fucking fire. So you're right on that. That was a good fucking Batman movie. But I think the Joker carried it. I don't think Christian Bale carried it. What was the Joker's name? He killed himself. Heath Ledger. There it is. Mr. Mick and Biggins for the sub. All right. Now onto the actual videos. Loyal for the five. Super off topic. Want to know if you dressed? Yes, I already did. I, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it again. This is like the, you are like the, probably the 50th person that's asked me today alone in the last 30 minutes. I talked about it yesterday. Talked about it today. Done talking about it. Uh, your family's crazy. Newlyweds. Truth or drink. Cut. Whose fault would it be if we got a divorce? It would probably be your fault. Let's be Why? honest. Because if you fell back into the ways that you- Address what? The T-Nickel stuff. Motherfucker saying, just tell us. I already did. I just, when I bring it up, then it, what happened? What, what happened? And then my whole chat, what, what, what happened? And then it's going to be a whole fucking 10 minute spiel again. And then we're going to get back on topic. And then somebody's going to ask me five minutes later. And then I'm going to have to fucking do it again, right? We're done with it. Are you still friends with him? I haven't even spoken to him prior to this for like the last five, six months. Like whenever we ran that last Twitch Rivals event in Fall Guys was the last time that I think I streamed with him. Which was when? Like November? Uh, Royal for the five. Uh, I already read that. I literally just read that. Jesus Christ, I have a short-term memory. Um, it had something to do with minor. Just know that. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to post the repost, the, the fucking response that he did. I know it got removed. Um, I don't know if he removed it, but it got removed at, like eight minutes after it uploaded. I'm assuming he's probably going to tweak or re-edit it or something like that. But, uh, I mean, you know, when it comes out, go watch it yourself. Determine what you believe. I mean, I'm going to watch it. I'll let y'all know what I think, but I mean, I haven't seen it yet. So. Uh, I already told you what I thought about th just the situation in general, but I mean, he reposted it already. Well, I'm not going to watch it right now. Go watch it yourself. Loyal for the five. I already read that. Ken's for the three. I'll make a brekkie right now. Watch your stream. Blueberry oatmeal with honey and low fat milk. That sounds fucking fire. You're the only streamer I watch. Yo, chat. Have y'all ever been to a pliables? Oh my God. Oh my God. Went to a pliables in fucking Fort Lauderdale on spring break. The best shit ever, chat. When you fuck, you get like an acai bowl, and then, bro, and they'll fucking put like bananas and blueberries, and like Nutella on that shit. Or you get like the oat bowl, and they'll do like protein powder. What is a pliable? It's like a basically like a fruit smoothie place, but instead of fruit smoothies, they give you like little fruit bowls. But they always have like a base that's like this blended frozen like acai or like other shit. Oh, so good. Cracking up for the sub, lucky for the three. Love, uh, really enjoy your streams and uh, videos. Thank you. I barely know how to operate on Twitch, but I want to say that I appreciate all the conversations and perspectives you share. Thank you. That was the rest of Ken's message. I got off topic when you mentioned the oatmeal. My apologies. All right. Chat, lock back in here. Are we ready to fucking watch the video? Hold up. My chat's fucking glitching. Okay. Uh, loyal for the three. Didn't know you addressed it. Uh, already haven't been in stream that much. You're good. Well, it happened like two days ago. Well, the, the situation started to happen like two days ago. But I'm saying like, or was it two days ago or yesterday? Yes. No, two days ago. Um, But I mean, you know, like I, 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 it's not your fault that you didn't know. But I'm just saying I've already talked about it like seven times. So it's like then I'm just repeating myself. And then I can't even get through the videos because it's like every 10 minutes somebody asks me. Split for the fucking thousand bitties. I'll say you bulls are fire. Exactly. Polar for the three. I want to say you helped me a bunch with my grief. I had to sit and watch my mom pass from cancer. Rip in the fucking chat. When I was eight and you've helped me so much with everything. You had to watch your mom die of cancer when you were eight. I am gen Polar, I am genuinely so sorry. 
Like, no one should ever have to fucking go through that shit. Your mom or you. Um, man, I like, I, I mean, I, I, I'm glad that I've helped you with stuff uh, at, at the end of the day, but uh, I, that must have been fucking awful, dude. I, I'm genuinely sorry. Wow. Fucking F cancer in the chat, too. Fuck, man. What cancer did she have? Uh, if you mind me asking. If not, it's it, uh, you don't have to say. Uh, Sky for the five. Uh, you should listen to the Devil's Night album by D12. It's Eminem's rap group. If you haven't, um, uh, maybe one day. But I need to get through these videos right now. And thank you, um, Bizzle for the three. Um, God, what haircut did I have then? I'm literally going to my YouTube now, and I'm gonna go back to 2022. That would be two years ago. Right? No, they said summer of 22. For one, one week. I think my hair looks better now than it did then. It's almost the same as well. Keep in mind, it is identical on this side. It just goes this way instead of all this way, right? It goes like this instead of like that. Like I normally am. People doing penalty shot videos. You can hold knives. Yeah. Let's do a poll here. Which one's better? I also didn't really do my hair today, but meh. I, I think that e even if you like one more than the other, it's like they're almost the same. And when you say my hair looks like shit now, it's like, bro, come on. Uh, cold for the sub, XX Alex for the sub. We live together when I'm 18, she'll be 80. So I don't think I'll be able to take care of all of her needs at the same time with college and a job. Yeah. I mean, have you talked to her about it? Cold for the sub, AVD for the three. Is there a way I could see how long I've been following? Exclamation point, follow edge. And now we're going to watch everybody in my entire chat spam it and only like some people to be able to see it. Um, but yeah. Hold up. Yep, now everybody's typing it, and, uh, you know, nobody's gonna see what their followage is, because it only, the command only works, like, once every fucking five seconds. Cold for the sub, Alex for the three, I already read that, Fox for the three, so I haven't been able to be here as much. Dude, you don't have to apologize when you're not here, Fox. I don't know why you apologize. I do my best with my hard schedule, you're my favorite streamer, I try to be here when I can. I appreciate that, but you don't need to, you know, like, you don't need to show up to my streams. It's, like, entirely optional, you know, like, it's fucking up to you. Hold up. I need to see one more of my hair, then. Ow. I still doubt it. I don't like my hair here. Honestly. Like, I don't like my hair there. I know some people do, but that's just whether or not you like longer or shorter hair. I'm doing a poll. Which is better? Now or then? Uh, Brooke likes my hair better now, so, um, um, at the end of the day, I don't really care what my chat thinks, I care what my girlfriend thinks, so, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, chatters, sorry, chatters, I don't really give a fuck what you fucking think, okay, uh, and even outside of that, um, yeah, my girlfriend dresses me and chooses my haircut and shit like that, because at the end of the day, I don't know what I should be doing there. And I used to wear sweatpants and a tank top every fucking day. And I still do, right? Uh, has Brooke basically chosen every outfit I've ever worn outside of this base shit that I wear on stream? Uh, yeah. Do I understand how clothing clothing pieces match together? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, I will walk outside wearing a green shirt, blue pants, and red shoes. And I don't give a fuck. Uh, I think it looks... I, I will, She'll be like, that doesn't match. And I'll be like, what do you mean it doesn't match? What the fuck? What the hell is that? And then she'll fucking start getting into, like, the accents on the shirt and shit. I don't get it. I don't understand it at all. She'll just pull it. She'll tell me outfits I wear. I'm like, okay. You know, I'll wear this outfit. Right? Okay, I get it. Yep, uh-huh. And then I look drippy. Right? 
55 now, 45 then. But at the end of the day, they're almost the same. My hair's just longer. Really, if being dead ass, it is almost the same haircut. My hair's just longer in that. All right. Let's get back into the fucking video here, chat. It used to be really bad. All right, now let's compare it to my, my first haircut, chat. This is the shit. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Chat, what thoughts on this haircut? What thoughts on this haircut? Anybody, anybody rocking with this haircut? Anybody rocking with that, that cut the most? Yeah, now that's the one. I think that's the one that speaks to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was great quality. Thanks. Yeah. yeah like it's like, oh, it's go like I got it at super cuts. Fuck, dude. Oh, we literally finished the video. Oh, that's awkward. I didn't even know we finished the fucking video. Get a mullet. Dude, mullets only work if you have fucking curly hair. Curly, puffy hair. If you get a mullet and you don't have curly, puffy hair, you're, you look, you look like, ah, uh, like, I don't want to say, like, musky, because that's just musk, but you look like you would stink. Like, if you have a mullet and it's just flat, and it's like a, like a, like a shitty, a shitty, like, ugh, it's just, it, it's just bad. Like, like, Max Taylor rocks a mullet. He has puffy hair that's curly, right? But if you have, like, a straight hair mullet and it's not puffy and it's just, like, short, oh, I don't like it. At the end of the day, though, you can't, I, I can't judge. I, I don't have the best hair. The sound of the Blue Yeti is so bad compared to this mic. Yeah, it is. Noodle for the sub. All right. Moments before disaster, cop body cam video. Lock the fuck in here, chat. Lock the fuck in here. On the night of May 26th, 2023, an officer was dispatched to a two-vehicle accident with injuries in Sparta, Wisconsin. While en route, the caller advised his son was assaulted by a male from the other vehicle, subsequently identified as a 55-year-old named William. It appeared that the caller attempted to overtake William's vehicle, prompting him to become aggressive. William continued to speed, preventing them from passing and even brake check them. Eventually, when the caller managed to pass his vehicle, William intentionally collided with them, causing both vehicles to spin into a ditch. Upon exiting their vehicles, William then seemed to target the caller's son and punched him in the face. The caller then tried to divert his attention away from his son, which caused William to trip and- I would beat the ever-living piss out of this guy. You're in the car with your son and this guy's road rage, he just starts beating up your kid. Fall into a creek. It was at this point when other motorists showed up to help. 44 is on the scene. Upon arrival, the officer attempted to interview William, who exhibited unusual behavior and reeked of alcohol. Is anybody still in the vehicle? Sir, you want to come over here and talk to me? Sir, you want to come well, over here and talk good. to me? What's that? You want to come over and talk to me? I don't want to talk to anybody. Okay. But what's going cool? is, is one of these your vehicles? I think so. Okay. <laughs> what? What do you think? You just wandered onto the fucking freeway? Can you turn it up? I think it's loud enough. What do you mean you think so? I think that one's mine. The, the purple one. The, okay, the red one? Yeah. Gotcha. Dude ran me off the road. What happened? I'm not sure. Okay. It just it, it happened so fast. He just reached out to pass me and he just cut me off. I didn't have any way to go. He's wet. Is that is that like flower or is he wet? I think his shirt is originally like that color. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm shaking like I'm wet, man. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah he's wet. It, it, so you were traveling this way. That's that was... gotta be sweat. Ain't nobody sweat on the front half of their body. Buddy just face planted into like the the crick. This way. I was going I'm going home. Okay. Where do you live at? You might hate... What time is it? What is twenty two? Twenty two twenty five. Uh, military time. Uh, 10, is that 10.25? That's 10.25 p.m. You, you want to show me your arms? Huh? I just want to 
Okay. I, I just saw the cut there. I didn't hear yeah, the, I don't the have cut in the, uh, the dirt. I don't have anything that's uh, feelable. Okay. You want to open up your mouth really quickly for me? I just want to make sure you don't have any blood in your... Okay. Okay. You got any more tests? No, I just want to make, I just want to make sure you're okay. The bottom line is I'm not submitting to you. Bottom line. Okay. What do you mean by that? I think he's already saying he's not going to do a breath of life. <laughs> At the end of the day, man, I'm not going to fucking, I'm not, I'm not doing the fucking breathalyzer bullshit, all right? What do I mean by that? Yeah. Because. Hold on, back I up. do, no, I'm not Hold being on. aggressive. I'm, well, you're, you're stepping towards me right I'm now, stepping man. forward. Okay. Just stay, just stay where you are I right now. I do not okay? have to okay. submit to whatever you say. Okay. Just, so, just we, so we understand each other. Okay. I'm going to turn my back down. Want to shoot me? No. What is going on here? <laughs> Man. I don't f know. Okay, why don't we just take a second I and just, just relax, okay? Lost my f***ing life. Okay, where do you live at? I'm on my way home. Gotcha. So you're traveling northbound. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know why he had to pass me. So he was but trying. When he did, he cut me off. That's I've been in road. I've been in road rage scenarios like that, where I pass somebody and they get mad and ride my ass for like five miles. Like I had one guy that was honking his horn. Actually, no, it was a woman. She was honking her horn. She was in, like, a shitty sedan. She was, like, flipping me off and shit because I passed her. And then she fucking passed me and brake checked me. And then I was just, like, I was, like, okay, I'm just going to let her go, you know? Why? Why engage? Like, I was mad, but I was more laughing mad because she got that upset that I fucking passed her. But then there's people that, like, will constantly, they'll do, like, the pass to pass, pass, pass. And they're, like, they're, like, beefing on the road. It's just, like, fucking, like, so, like, you're not a bitch if you cave, right? You just fucking, why are you, why even with, withhold this fucking argument, right? I've also had people be in, like, rage road, uh, road rage scenarios where they're, like, mad that I'm going slow. They'll ride my ass honking at me and shit. And I'm not even going slow. They'll pass me. And, like, they're gone for, like, five, ten minutes. And then I meet up to them on a red light. Best feeling ever. Best feeling ever. Somebody passes you when you're not even going slow. And then like 10, 15 minutes down the line, you're just exactly where they are. Like it didn't, it literally didn't matter that you were going the speed you were going. Because at the end of the day, you both just pulled up to the same location at the same time. Right. Like, where he's been sitting there, so he wasted more gas, and you're just going to pull up, like, you know, casually. Stuffy for the three. Do you hear about T. Nichols? Yes, we're not talking about it again. Bennett for the sub. Puller for the three. Bet that somebody in chat would pay more for the fan behind you than the paid for your setup. Uh, Foxman for the three. I don't think anybody would buy the fan behind me. So and the two of us. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even have a chance to break. Okay. I've got a CDL. Okay. I've been driving since 1986 okay. under a CDL. Okay. I got a I got a chauffeur's license yeah. in 1984. Okay. I've been driving forever. Yeah. I don't out, I don't deal with this. Shit. When people do this stuff, I've got the reaction time and all this stuff. Whatever happened here, this guy was on a mission. Okay. I don't I don't know. I can't make. I, I'm gonna shut up because I need a lawyer. I'm not hurt. Car is total. Okay. I'm sure that's probably his car. We have EMS here. Would you like just to speak with them really quickly? No. I I, I, no. I, I know you said you're fine, but it's just. I'm fine. If you can just get me to my house, I'll be fine. Okay. They're still gonna come and just ask you some questions. Yeah, okay. I know. So they're gonna do what they gotta do. Yeah. And I'm not gonna be difficult. I appreciate that. I'm gonna also say right now, I want a lawyer. Okay. So you understand. Okay. Because I got a right. Okay. To yep. a lawyer. Okay. Yep. I got a right to representation, and I've got a right. I'm not answering any more of your questions. Okay. I just don't understand. Like, they're saying that he ran them off the road and hit them purposefully. Even if I was really drunk, like, and you were driving, what would... You know how mad you'd have to be to just not give a fuck that you're going to ruin your car? He has three fingers. It's not aggressive. No, I, I get to understand. Wait. So we have hospital staff or hospital staff. Hi. EMS staff I'm here. Good. She's just going to ask you some questions, okay? Hi, I'm Ellen. What happened tonight? I couldn't tell you. 44 minutes. Are you in the green think, one or the red one? I think I was in the red one. Okay. I'm not going to answer any more questions. Do you have any more questions? I'm not going to. I'm not being aggressive. I didn't let him, I didn't let him put his hands on me. I thought he'd come after me, but he went on myself. Okay. 
Where'd you get hit by? Are they blocking the sun? That was your pain? Yeah, yeah, no. yeah it did. Yes. It hurt. Okay, you yeah. punched you in the face. Did it hurt? I mean, at don't, first. Don't, don't, don't baby. Oh listen. my god, dude. The kid's probably like fucking 12. Don't don't baby. Baby. I know everybody's right tell here, okay? Him, but I gotta talk to him, okay? This is not okay. Hey, hey. Uh, you, you, you. I know everybody's a little jacked up. That's fine, but this is my son, and I'm going to talk to him. I get that, but I need to talk to him. No, but still, this is not okay. And don't tell him. Sir, come over here. I think that he is rightfully mad because this like 50 year old drunk guy rode them off the road and then just punched his kid in the face for no reason. Hey, no, don't touch. No, I'm not going to sit here and. And have you all right, come assess me. Get her out of here. I get you jacked up, okay, but for a purpose of our investigation, I don't need you sitting there talking into his ear, okay? I also don't need anyone else talking over his ear. Who's not talking to his ear? Nobody. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I won't. Then I get where I, you're I coming from as, as I a father. I, I get it, but just you. bring I'm, it down a second so we can it. do this, okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Or I'm going to start walking home. I've got a mile and a half, and I'll be there. There's two more people down there. Hi. Want to assault me now? You're gonna have to shoot me in the back. No, hey, I just, just stay, stay tight here. Where are you going, man? No. Are you gonna come get me? No, no, I, no. I, where, where are you going? I'm going home. Okay, we have to stand tight. We have to stay here. No, I don't. To do the crash information. Are you, are you detaining me? Stay back. Are you buddy. detaining me? Wouldn't it technically be a hit and run if he just walked and if he walked away? Like if he like fleed the scene. Stay back, buddy. No, I'm not. That would t you're not allowed to leave. If it's like a fender bender and you like talk and exchange info, that's different. Like I had that and like the cops didn't come because it was just like I bumped into them and then I ended up just paying for their bumper. But it was like in this, like this is a major car crash. Like you're fucking in a ditch. I'm, okay. I'm not going to attack you. Hey, we have what a you right. going to tell me? Are you right going to attack? He is messing a finger. Me? Stay back, buddy. No, I'm not. I'm I'm okay. not going to attack you. Hey, we have what a you right. you going to tell me? Are you right going to detain me? Detain me? 26. You want to come over here? 549. As the officer, I feel like they'd immediately know this guy's drunk. Officer tried to detain William at the scene. He grew increasingly agitated and suddenly threw hands at the officer, which led to his decentralization. You don't have a right to arrest me? We're you. not. We're not trying to arrest you, man. We're Get here. the Oh, See how you are? Hey. You're two faced? Alright, buddy. Back up. Dude's fucking dude's throwing hands like it's like a middle school fucking slap fight. We're not trying to arrest you, man. We're Get here, the f here up to my get back vehicle info. See how you are? Hey. You're two faced? Alright, buddy. Back up. <laughs> On the All right, bring out the taser. Stop resisting. Oh, it takes two of you. Stop resisting. You're a bunch of cowards. Stop resisting. You're gonna fight. It's gonna hurt for you. No. Stop. 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 Are you done? Stop. All right. Get on your but stomach. You're a bunch of get on your stomach. Get on your stomach. Just like you are. Why do they always do this? Why don't they just tase him? I don't understand this. Like, it's always, like, a battle with, like, three officers to, like, get him on the ground. Bro, just tase the fuck out of him, and then he'll stop moving for, like, ten seconds. And then you could just fucking handcuff him. It's paperwork to tase him. They're not allowed to do that so fast. He fucking swung hands at him. I think you're allowed to tase him, right? If some guy starts attacking a cop, you're allowed to fucking tase He's wet. Would that actually hurt him more? I got this arm. You, can, you can't break me. Dude, you're gonna get tased here a second. You can do that. You're just a bunch of cars. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you lose. All you're doing is hurting you. No one's hurting you. You're so fun. Ow! Yeah, the put your hands in the handcuffs, dipshit. Ow! I haven't done anything to resist you. You f***ing punched me in the oh, face. Go oh, f*** off. Oh, f Okay. Yeah, Go ahead. Take your punches. I got him. You're a bitch. He's taking him to jail right away, physical abuse or child. Bro, I just stand up and say, all right, get up. And he's sitting there face to the ground with, a ha with his hands behind his back. He's like, meh. Meh. Trying to fucking stand up. Better law enforcement. All right. All right. You can walk home now. You got to you gotta stand up, though. Meh. Meh. Get your car. Get him out of here. Yeah, I'm fine.
Thank you. Dude, don't you grab me. I'm gonna do do not grab me. You attack me. I want to attack you. Punch him off to the face. Oh. Bro's gonna get charged with a DUI resisting arrest battery against a police officer and hitting a kid. Yeah. Oh, that was a well, Andy's gonna have to pay for their car. You'll get yours. He's in custody. You'll get yours. What's his case name? Get him. You'll get yours. Get your hands off my ball. No, did you have a William yet? That's who we're in custody with. I don't want to end in this situation. Driving home. Is it drunk? I think so. TB said, and you probably can't hold a tennis ball. What the fuck does that even mean? Spider for the sub, Gil for the sub, stuff even three. Already read that. Uh, Some asshole runs me off the road, them, yeah. and I'm getting arrested because I'm pissed off. You're hurting me. Put yourself in this situation. I didn't put myself in this situation. Yeah, you did. The hell I did. Meet 44 at Sparta Mayo. We're going to do a search for him for a blood draw. What's happening in this video? Uh, this guy's drunk, and he got into, uh, because uh, I, yeah, no, I saw, like, a bunch of people join. So, if, if you're new here, uh, a bunch of, uh, these, these two people got into a car crash. It's a father, wife, and son, and then this, uh, drunk guy. He ran them off the road into a ditch, punched the kid in the face, and now he's just resisting arrest. A bitch. You can keep William, he's stop. also sopping wet. I'm talking for a second. You okay. You're going to go in the back of a squawk, or are you going to cause any issues? No, but you're gonna get issues go. later. I'm gonna let your feet go. If you kick me, fine. If you kick me, we're I'm gonna, gonna have issues. You. All right, your feet are gonna let go. No, good. Roll over to your left side. <laughs> I've done nothing wrong. Okay, ready to stand up? There's my wallet. Can yeah, somebody... I'm gonna grab that. Yeah, we'll get it. Okay. Stand up. One, two, three. Okay. I've done nothing wrong. We're going to back the squad car. This way. You guys are gonna get yours. Okay, that's what court's for. <laughs> no. That's where God's going. Sure, whatever you like to call it. Hop in the car. Oh, God. Oh. Put me in there. This one. This one. Oh, God. Oh. oh, he sounded like Peter Griffin. When he, when he gets his knee hit. No. I'm not trying to. Oh. Ah. Ah. Please loosen him up. Here, get your knee in there. I can't move. I, I'm Six three. I'm six two and I sit back here. Oh, you shut up. Okay. Oh, oh, how am I gonna get myself well, in here with like he my hands? Injuries, so. Oh my god. Oh. Are not, bruv? I've done nothing wrong. Yo, he's literally making a Peter Griffin noise. <laughs> Come on, you'll get yours. Oh, he just keeps saying you'll get yours, dude. That's like a threat. Knees and elbows. You know, I'm trying. You punch in the face? Yeah, twice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. You can see anything. Oh, yeah. I just killed a couple of eyes. Yeah. I smell all cold. You smell cold. Yeah. His eyes are glassy too. Yeah. Appreciate it, sir. Oh, it is. No, I appreciate you coming out, sir. Before his car was towed, they located a half-empty bottle of brandy on the passenger floorboard. Ooh, drinking while driving. Not even, not even drunk driving. Drinking while driving. Would you ever play Hello Neighbor? What is Hello Neighbor? PR League for the three. Showy for the four. Uh, usually can't watch because of sports practices during the weekday, so I watch your VOD channel. Wanted to pop in and said something for being the best streamer and being so entertaining. Appreciate it, Joe. You're the best. Thank you. Hunter for the sub. Spider and Gil for the sub. Hello, neighbor. Oh, the horror game. Yeah, no, 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 no. I had a... I, I, what was the one that I was thinking of with the shitty puppets that we played? Oh, my God. My Friendly Neighborhood is what I was thinking of. That game sucked. Hello, neighbor. Would you guys ever want me to play that? I would play it. I, it doesn't look that scary, though. It looks just like a guy with a shovel. I'll maybe try it. We got a lot of scary games, though, that we got to play. Dodgers for the five gifteds. Thank you for the five fucking gifted subs, Dodgers. Thank them for the sub. Thank you for the five gifteds. I got here and they were already suffered. It said that he was in the, the double lanes and he was just driving. And then as soon as, I don't know if he was trying to switch. Do you have any games you want me to play or videos you want me to react to? Exclamation point Discord. Join the Discord. Send a video to react to games to play. Video discussion have games such as that. It's how I find most of the videos that I watch and the games that I play. So, if you have any videos you want me to watch, games you want me to play, send those there.
lanes, and this guy just gunned it and then hit it him almost. Yeah. 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 They were trying to pass me, so they said there was like a, almost like a road rage incident back up there on the hill, like in the two lanes. They were going around between there. that. Oh, yeah, that's what he was saying. I'm fast forwarding through this conversation. Yeah, let's get to the guy in the car. We can do the speed limit and we'll get there in the same amount of time. We are doing the speed limit. I appreciate you backseat driving though. It's not that important. Not like somebody tried to kick the president. Well, you guys sure like to kick people when they're down. At the end of the day, three eats and a cot is better than what you get if you're living in a nursing home at $7,000 a day. At the end of the day, my grandpappy told me if you skip a rock against the lake, then the birds aren't singing. At the, at the end of the day, you know, it's like if you're speeding in a highway, don't let your goose get too gobbled or it's not going to fucking, you know, the, uh, the rocks aren't going to sing. So I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you saying right now? So you kick my ass. Nobody asked you to be talking right now. You kick my ass. At the end of the day, you know what? That just makes you a parent beater. Well, I've spent another $15,000 on a lawyer to uh, defeat Monroe County and their lack of training and their lack of skill as police officers. Again. Do we even know what you're saying right now? At the end of the day, you <laughs> gotta get me there. At the end of the day, you know, it's like, um, uh, it's like if I drink a bottle of whiskey and drive a car, it's just... You know, it's like the same thing as skipping a rock across the lake for old me. You know, I've had a CDL since 1986. Uh, I've been driving these roads ever since I was a wee lad, you know. It's like my, my father once told me, if you if you ever get caught in a bear trap, just remember to bring a stick of butter. They're safe, so you better drive better than you suck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Dude, slow down. 42 and a 25 is a little bit fast. We don't have to be in that kind of hurry. Then you're in a school zone. But that doesn't apply to you, does you're it? In a fucking school zone at fucking at midnight. You're in a school zone at midnight. No, there's nobody there. His school in session? Because you're a cat with, with a fucking badge. His school you in session? Whatever you want. Is school in session? It doesn't school, matter what school, school in session is. Are they in third period right now at at twelve a.m.? School in session. Is there children present? Whether or not kids are there. Is there children present? Did you see any? No, I did not. Does that mean there's kids present? So don't sit there and be a cop, pompous ass, and pretend that you get to do whatever the hell you want because you got a badge. Because everyone's allowed to drive the regular speed limit in a school zone if it's past school hours. You only have to follow the school zone speed limit if people are in class and at the school. Because people don't respect your badge anymore. You know why? Why? Because you got a bunch of papa's asses. Okay. I can sit here and recite off of call, all kinds of shit, but it doesn't really matter what I have to say. I agree. So I think it's best yeah. if you just shut up. Well, you can like it or you don't. The bottom line is... It's true. They don't respect your badge. There's a lot of people who respect the badge. I just think you don't respect the badge, but that's okay. You don't. It's not required to respect the badge. No, it's not required. But it is what required I just said. to uh, have respect for the badge. As in for me? Why do you people? As in for me? At the end of the day, the bottom line is when I was a kid playing cops and robbers on the playground, I was one of the best cops. You know, uh, my teacher, Mr. Smith, told me that I had I had the guts and I had the gall to be in the force. But, you know, my grades weren't there, you know, so I uh, ended up, uh, you know, just kind of chilling. Uh, I don't really know what I do right now. I just kind of get drunk and drive around. You know, it's pretty fun nowadays. But, um, you know, I always got my stick of butter on me in case I get into a bear trap. You know, that's what, what my grandpappy always used to tell me. And, you know. I do have a I do have a cop uniform that I cosplay in sometimes just in case I ever need to get in uh into you know into action or anything you know in case anything you know starts going down I could just get a you know I could get in I could say I'm a cop even though I'm not but you know it's a pretty realistic looking uniform I bought it at Spencer's a little tight on the waist um also not a lot of not a lot of breast room they kind of push up my nipples a little bit mm, you know it's, it makes me look pretty good in the mirror though.
have okay. respect for the badge. As in, like it's the ones that are wearing it. Okay. Talk all you want. I to give it. It's your story. You're gonna create it how you want. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, when you're done with this, I recommend that you request. Oh shit, Dodgers! Thank you for the five gifteds. Thank them if you got us up. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Luca for the three. Love the streams. Thank you. A copy of the body camera footage so you can watch how you acted in your behavior today. Okay. Can you get me the last uh, 50 seconds to the two minutes before that body bad camera was there? What are you talking about? The 40 to 50 seconds prior? Prior to, to what? The body cam you got? What? Yeah. Come on, bitch. Uncuff me. I bet you I kick your ass too. What are you saying? I said I. I really don't think he would. Bet you kick my, I kick your ass. <laughs> I, I bet you'd kick my, oh wait, no, I'd kick your ass if we got into a fight. Too, if I uncuff, you uncuff me. If I uncuffed myself right now, I think you'd pile drive my ass. Wait, no, that's not what I mean. You are a fucking coward. Okay. You don't defend your constitution. You are Yell as they come. Just to clarify what you just told me is that if I took the cuffs off of you, you would beat my ass too. No. Okay, what the I would challenge you. Oh, you to challenge beat my me. Ass. Challenge me to beat my ass. Yeah, there's a difference. He's trying to get him to say that he would hurt him because then he can charge him with a threat. Okay. Come on, coward. Make something up. You know okay. What? I've got a right to free speech and I've got a right to the Fourth Amendment. You can kiss my ass, motherfucker. What is the Fourth Amendment? The right to. Uh, confront my, <laughs> my accuser. That's Fourth Amendment? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Come on, coward. When you get home later, look it up. You don't even have balls enough to stand up for the Constitution. Still ain't got balls, do you? I wouldn't donate. Yeah, I bet your balls are like little peanuts, man. Not like walnuts. Not something big, you know. They always told me if a man's nuts aren't bigger than golf balls, he's not really that big of a guy, right? He's more of a coward in my mind. Policeman's balls because they don't have any. Getting ready to beat my ass, are you? Come on, coward. Gonna have to hit me harder than a baseball bat, mother. Did you pee your pants? <laughs> no, I didn't pee okay. my pants. I'll pee your <laughs> pants. That doesn't make any sense, dude. It does make a lot of sense. <laughs> did he just say I didn't pee your pants? Didn't pee okay. my pants. I'll pee your pants. <laughs> that doesn't doesn't make any sense, dude. It does make a lot of sense. I'll piss on you all day long. All right. And your badge. Okay. Do you get that now? No. Uh, Bro, that's, that's like him saying, who shit my pants? You're a slow that's why he made you a cop. <laughs> that got a lot of yellow number five in it? What, what was that? Does that got a lot of yellow number five in it? What's that? Yellow number five is the color of yellow. Yeah, but what does that mean? You, you, you're, you're that slow? I don't get why you're saying, does it have yellow in it? It's water. He's calling me yellow number five, and he's saying that I'm yellow. And he's no, saying it's... it as an insult. He's just calling you a coward, then. You're too f***ing stupid to get that. That's a good one. Well, at least he's not just calling me a coward, man. We heard that. Mm -hmm. At least he's getting creative with it. You are an enemy of mine. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I was a little, I was a little, I was a little confused by what you meant by that earlier. Yeah, we are enemies. We stand against each other. I don't see why we have to be enemies, but... We don't have to be enemies, okay. but we have to stand for the same thing. We don't actually need to stand for the same thing. Yes, we do. No. The U.S. Constitution is the number one law on the land. So, my next and last question for you, okay? You understand that if you hit or harm any nurses, doctors, or lab technicians inside the hospital, that's another felony charge, correct? Why would I do that? Okay, good. I'm glad we're on the same page then. I'm 55. I don't fight anymore. Well, as of about an hour ago, you did. Back up. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go right back out the same way we came in, okay? Hello. Sparta here with one. <clears throat> Is he chill now? I think it was just he was probably so fucking drunk. Yeah. All right, William. Are we ready? I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Seatbelt. No, I'm just gonna smile and look at you like you're pretty. So, are you? We're good. Uh, I just, I don't think he, I don't think the majority of the people that are in these body cam videos act like that if they're not under the influence. I think it's just a very heightened version. I haven't been uncooperative since you got me in the car. I promise you that. I'm not going to be uncooperative. It's right over here in the blue box. It's I don't two inches long. It's a pocket. Yeah, I know. I just want to make sure it wasn't open. I don't want yeah. to get stuck See? or anything. There it is. It's two inches long. 
Do you all the dirt hanging off of me? Yep, I do. I crawled out of the freaking ditch. Okay. Somebody run me off the road. So can I ask you if you're going to comply with taking these handcuffs off or not going to be problem? I'll comply. All right. William was charged with felony counts of second degree recklessly endangering safety, physical abuse to a child, battery threat to an officer times two, misdemeanor counts of disorderly conduct and resisting an officer. He also received several citations, including OWI, first offense. Ultimately, William's cash bond was set at $1,500. How long do you even stay in prison for that? Like a month? He's probably going to get sued. But I feel like physical abuse to a child is not... Like, that's a... Uh, reckless endangerment, battery slash threat to an officer, physical abuse to a child. I feel like you're going to you're gonna get some sort of sentence for that. Twenty-five to life. That's murder. That would be murder. That's the charge for murder, not the charge for uh, dri driving while drunk and punching a teenager. You're not going to get twenty-five to life for that. What's an OWI? Operating while intoxicated. It's the same thing as a DUI. Driving under the influence, operating while intoxicated. Uh, carries for the sub. Scrub and sir for the sub. All right. Next video. Oh, God. Twitch is evolving. This is uh, about the new Twitch TOS here, uh, as well as uh, what certain streamers are doing with that. What's the difference between a DUI and an OWI? I'm pretty sure they, I, they're identical, right? What's, what's, I think they're interchangeable. Difference between DUI and OWI. I feel like we looked this up. OWI is operating while intoxicated. Uh, and DUI is driving while intoxicated. OWI is used at, in states like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Indiana, and Iowa, whereas DUI is used in Alaska, Arkansas, Louisiana, Minnesota, Missouri, North Carolina, New Jersey, New Hampshire, New Mexico, and like the rest of the states. They're the same thing. It's just drunk driving. It's just what they define them as. That's no Twitch is evolving. Twitch is a platform that's no stranger to evolution and i think we've entered into a new phase in this blossoming butterfly of a streaming service uh next for the three did you see the t nickel yes i'm not that you you are the 10th person that has uh asked me about this we've talked about it three times this stream uh i'm done talking about it you could go back in the vod you could look at yesterday's stream we talked about it then too you know i kind of want to get into other shit i feel like we should just pin a message at this point that we've already spoken about it just because I feel like people are not like, I know you're probably, you just got here, but it's like, I feel bad that you're sending a bit down to ask me about it when I've already fucking talked about it a bunch. Uh, all right. Uh, but yeah, we got, somebody said how many more videos do we have? Like five. We have a lot. Lock back in. I'm rewinding. Twitch is evolving. Twitch is a platform that's no stranger to evolution. And I think we've entered into a new phase in this blossoming butterfly of a streaming service. Now, I know for a lot of people, Twitch is mainly like a gaming platform, but it's gone through so many different changes that it's more than that now. There's huge events that are hosted there, really high quality productions, IRL streams. A lot of different content is on Twitch these days. And when you think of Twitch now, the first thing you think of isn't always going to be gaming. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I want to drag you kicking and screaming into the future because a pioneer... Oh, you didn't answer the other thing I said? I'm the guy who asked you to guess my job at 18. I work at a jail. That's not a question. ...has just arisen to really showcase the power of technology. Behold, true gaming in its purest form. Uh... This is what <laughs> streaming is all about. Now, the censoring on her butthole was done by me. I felt I had to just to make... Nah, but you don't even need to censor it anymore. Like, I used to get nervous about that shit on Twitch because it was like, damn, dude, like, they might think that's TOS. But, like, if you go to browse, if I go on Twitch right now... Wait, so question chat, because you... Like...
make sure that this video would be safe to be uploaded. But make no mistake, while live, it was not censored at all. This was the director's cut. Full-blown poop shoot action. Barely covered by, like, the tiniest string of fabric. So last night while I was streaming, chat was telling me That's gotta that be TOS? No, <laughs> that's not even... But that's not even bad. She was in like a fucking bathing suit. This is this is like you can you'll see streamers on Twitch now that'll be like borderline naked. Like I would say I would say ninety five percent nude. That I should check the out. pick he showed is Strawberry Tabby. Strawberry Tabby, if you guys remember, raids us. Like Strawberry Tabby, Strawberry Tabby raids me. Like she's raided me like five times. Seems like a nice person, but it's just like, it, like you, she's in the realm of content where it's like, this is what she does, right? Whether it's like Just Dance or like Valorant. Looks like she's playing FNAF here. They wanted my opinion on if it was breaking Twitch terms of service, like I'm some kind of fucking hall monitor for Twitch. And it just piqued my curiosity, so I checked it out. Her Somebody said, you tap in that? Uh, I, have a, I have a girlfriend. So, no. Um, no. Her name is Strawberry Tabby, and she was one of the most popular. A, that'd be a hard no. I am, uh, I'm taken. Streamers last night while I was on, she was playing Valorant at the time, but she had been live for five hours streaming, and I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that this was the setup. So there's the torso cam for like the titties, like so it's mainly like honkers and a very tight bikini, and then a totally separate camera just for butthole, a pure ass cam. And then, like, a very tiny... Is that a new tattoo? Does he always have that hand tat? I feel like I've never noticed that. Scam. And then, like, a very tiny box for gameplay. Now, when I was made aware of this, I was joking about it. And at some point during the stream, she went on, like, a phone call for... A... How do you notice that? I noticed tattoo changes. A ...brief moment and then came back with a changed set of bottoms. So it seems like she must have got a call from someone at Twitch letting her know that her previous garments weren't acceptable. So she changed into this, yet kept everything else exactly the same. And you can still, of course, see, like, butthole anus folds and everything. Bro, like, it's still... the, the, Valorant, the Valorant is one-tenth of the screen. It's the size of my fucking face cam, almost. Folds and everything like it's still <laughs> I would watch a Joe bikini stream. Yo, should I have a foot cam? I think I should just have a foot cam in the bottom left like You can still see all of it, but there's a little bit more covering towards the crack like the ass crack top of it And I, I couldn't help but just laugh for a while now There's been this arms race on twitch with sexual content where creators have found that it makes a lot of money to do Sexual content on twitch and it builds a huge audience So they're constantly trying to push boundaries for what twitch will allow well, and a lot of it's also promo for only fans um just like the people that do TikTok to promo their OnlyFans or like Twitter and shit. Ugh, it's basically the same thing. Any of the women, not any of them, but a lot of the women that you're going to see that do um, that type of stuff also do OnlyFans because it, it kind of gives them a filter to promo OnlyFans because you can't really mar you can't market an OnlyFans with inside OnlyFans. You market OnlyFans by outside social medias. And so Twitch streamers will make an ass load of money on Twitch. Uh, but also get a lot of people to buy their OnlyFans content. Oh, they and make Twitch a fucking bag. Like Amaranth. Like, I don't know if Amaranth does um, that shit anymore. Like, I don't know if she... I don't know if she even streams anymore. Isn't she a kick streamer now? Uh, but she makes... I think Amaranth made, like, fucking three mil in a month or something like that. Which just doesn't crack down hard on it themselves. Like the most Who the hell is buying that? You would be surprised how many people buy OnlyFans subscriptions. You'll ever see a creator get banned for for these type of streams is like three days. There was a creator who fully goatseed herself bare ass on stream and she got a three day ban. There oh my god, I just fucking remembered Max Taylor texted me and I never responded. All right. Pancake for the sub. There was another streamer who just fully had sex on stream and only got a... Th what? Oh, my God. I remember that. That was like a year ago. Three-day ban. So there's no real risk associated with trying this. Yeah, she was like fucking on stream and shit. It was like off camera, though. 
It was weird. It was like she was she was standing like this. And she was going. But you could see him in the mirror or something like that. It was like there was like a reflection to where you would see it. Nah, see, and then y'all clip that. Like, what the fuck? Chat. Chat, stop. Chat, stop. Chat, stop. Chat, stop. Federal and JP for the sub. Bro. <sighs> you gain a lot of money from it. So it's not like I'm even mad at her or anything. It's really a don't hate the player, hate the game situation because Twitch doesn't really do much about it. Thus, it must be okay with their policies. But anyway, I just wanted to show you some of the clips from last night where I was going through this in real time. And just to give you an update on where things are at this morning, she received a ban, which oh, she was I'm not taking responsibility for. It's not my fault. Uh, that You can't blame me, Coomers. I, I know there's a lot of angry gooners. Is she still banned? Let me look. I feel like she's been banned like fucking 10 times. Yeah, she is still banned. Oh, but then here's an ASMR streamer recommended when I looked her up. One sub equals one minute of mouth sounds. Oh, she's like, it's like her heartbeat. Is what we're listening to. Okay, we have to do the jiggle machine chat. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, not, the not the jiggle okay. machine. What the fuck is okay, the yeah, jiggle machine? Really what the hell is the jiggle machine, bro? I am dipping from that stream. Holy shit. Yeah, think I was the, the reason she got banned? <laughs> what the fuck is the jiggle machine? <laughs> Nah. But I am. I oh no, chat, chat. We oh fuck. We have to do the jiggle machine. Oh no. Fucking standing there. Yeah, it's gonna be like two minutes of that shit. I am innocent in this. I like all of you was just watching the content, and that was it. I I didn't report her or anything. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, there's one guy in the chat, and he keeps saying, have you seen, uh, I, I, I won't say the streamer's name, stream. She's got her whole ass out, and I was like, there's no oh, way. Oh, God. So I go to the stream, <laughs> and she's playing Valorant oh, no, in this really it. tiny he box. It. He blurs it. She has, he you would think. It. Here, we're going to go like this. Okay, and then I'm going to crop like that, and then let me see if I can get my censoring in position. This is so, I can't, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way I make that work. And she's moving right now, like her, th there's no way, there's no way I make that work. But I mean, it's, it's on, it's literally one of the biggest streams on Twitch right now, so it's, it's gotta be okay with their rules. What does the hammer do, Charlie? I don't know, but th that's why I thought I could maybe censor it with the hammer, but th it just doesn't work. <laughs> We're gooning together. I love how Charlie is a donut scandal URL in the background. Bakery called out for allegedly trying to pass off Dunkin' Donuts as homemade vegan and gluten-free donuts. Yeah. Okay, you need you need help, brother. I'm in there for the Valorant gameplay. Yeah, you you and me both. That's why we're all there. No, I mean good for her. If, if Twitch if Twitch is okay with it, fucking let the hustle ride. But I. Every time she moves her ass closer to the camera, it legitimately feels like we're about to do a, a deep dive colon cam. Oh, God. It is incredibly close range. I but can it's not like this. She Like, she's the streamer that he's centralizing on. But there is so... Like, dude, hold up. It's like all... It's all of Twitch. Not all of Twitch. It's a lot of Twitch, though. I don't know if they're ever in just, just chatting. Oh, no, they are. There's way less than just chatting, but pools, hot tubs, the entire category of pools, hot tubs, and fucking beaches is just people that are doing, up. Oh, she has the jiggle cam. Oh my god, bro. Like, what the fuck?
It's it's like fucking 50 streamers. I mean, a lot of them have zero viewers. I don't even know if I could show this. I don't know why am I why do I even see it's like it's like a gut reaction. I'm like, I don't know if I could show this. But it's it's fucking on Twitch. So it doesn't matter. It's like all these streamers do I mean, like some of them are genuinely doing like yoga, I guess, but like that's not that we're not doing yoga. Okay. Like who's who's wearing that fit while we're doing yoga here? And then people at beat like this they've just got a hot tub in their room. That's just a bathtub. She has 17,000 viewers. Oh my god. Oliver and Jazza for the sub. Toto for the sub. That is so many people. And Crypt for the sub. What was Amaranth averaging in her peak? Did she have more or less? Anybody, re anybody remember when Amaranth was doing like fucking nine hour ASMR streams? And she would just lick a mic for like nine hours? And and it would just be like that would be literally the entirety of the stream. I, I would go insane. Like I, no matter how much I'm making, fucking it was looped. Yeah, but it was like a three hour loop. I remember it being looped, but I remember like and people talking about that shit. But it was it was still like it was still a three hour loop. It wasn't like a half hour loop. It was like three hours of doing it, and then it that's still fucking nuts. I'm gonna look up Amaranth on Twitch Tracker. I know she had a lot. She doesn't really stream on Twitch anymore. In her peak, she averaged fucking twelve to 15,000 people. She used to stream 358 hours a month. To put that into perspective, chat, I stream about anywhere between 80 and 110 hours a month. And she streamed 358 hours a month. How many is that a day? 30 days times 24 is 720. So she streamed 720 divided by 720 divided by 380. Wait, now what am I doing? Wait, how do I do this? How do I determine if she streamed 380 hours in a month divided by 30 days? I'm a fucking idiot. She streamed 12 hours a day. Just licking mics and shit. See hair follicles. It's like looking at her ass through a microscope. So it's a high quality asshole cam. It's 8K. She's she's definitely got a black magic cam just for her ass. Like if she gets goosebumps, you'll be able to see each individual one. <laughs> she's filming her ass with an IMAX camera. Yeah, she's making it so it's compatible with the big screen. <laughs> You could watch it on one of those dome, on, on like the Vegas dome. She's using the same technology they used to film Oppenheimer. Is she good at the game? I don't know. I wasn't looking at the gameplay. I have no clue. I haven't. I haven't the foggiest. I can. Act How many of her viewers do you think actually watch the gameplay? I feel like that's there to entertain her to a degree. Also, entertain her as well as maybe. Not skew the guidelines slightly, but also be like, oh no, I'm gaming. Cause if you have if I had if I had like my whole ass on screen and there was about like say me and Charlie's face cams combined of of like a video game. Like you're not gonna be that's fucking so little on the screen, you're not gonna be watching that. I actually see her asshole. Like her actual asshole. Like legit, no, like it's not, e it's not even covered anymore. I can see each fold. And oh! there's one guy, that guy in the chat, I think it's the same guy who was like, fix your cam. I just saw him Dude, celebrate. Why the way he's describing it. He said, come on, f fudge. He said, come on, fudge. Come on, fudge. <laughs> no, that is fucking... Do you think the guy that said that was serious or joking? <laughs> I don't know what that means, but he's excited. Oh, uh, probably poop, dude. Probably waiting for some shit. Come on, fudge. Yeah, making fudge, dude. Had to be. Had I'm to be excited for him. 
I censored. Do you want to? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Edgar. Can you send me the the censor so that way I can at least pull up what it looks like? That's a good idea. I didn't even think to screenshot it. Yeah, send me the censored screenshot. This this bot's definitely getting age restricted. This is. I mean, the video he made isn't even age restricted. Like, I would make this into a YouTube video. I wonder if it would get age restricted. I think we though. just witnessed the birth of the new meta here. <laughs> you 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 got a a a, a big wow. moment there. A highlight reel. It is like one sixth of the of the fucking screen. Which is nudity policy. For that, you'll be receiving a thirty day suspension. Camera is so clear, we'll actually see her farts. That's what I was saying. Like that camera is unreal. Like she legitimately might be using a black magic for that. You would actually see the fart fumes come out, like a cartoon. Hats off to the gooner who blew the lid on that operation, because that was fascinating. And she still has, like, the kiddie pool in the background, so that way she plays by the pools and hot tubs rule. <laughs> it's a Walmart flamingo kiddie pool. She got up and left, so I'm guessing, like, one of her Twitch contacts told her that it was a little much after five hours worth. Interesting timing on that. Very beautiful. Oh, my God. Toes and cheeks. Ayo. Incredible. Yacht. Beautiful. Sniffa. What does bien esos labios mean? I gotta Google that. Good. Bien esos labios. In English. Ooh. It means good, good those lips. Good lips. Hope he's talking about uh like face lips you made her change clothes oh fuck i yeah, the, 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 lips that one guy who was here. talking about here comes the fudge and fix the cam in all caps is gonna be livid here comes the fudge <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's had his whole night ruined the hog was not fully squeezed and that man is going to be inconsolable why do you have resubscribe because someone gifted me a sub. You just created your own version of the Joker. Yeah, that one desperate coomer. Damn. How dare you? But also, there's no reason to go into DEFCON, by the way, Gooners. The panic was unwarranted. All she did was change into a different uh, lower bikini bottom. So instead of having, like, a small piece of paper there... It's yeah, it's just it would just cover her ass more. All right. Well, that was a wild video. Yeah, but no, Twitch, new Twitch TOS is kind of crazy. Like, um, I mean, it's been that way for a bit. It looks like they got a little more restricted on it since they released it. Because I think, like, the first week, it was like people were, like, actually fucking naked on stream and shit. Whereas now it's more, um, like, restricted. Oh, God. Like, I'm pulling up the tab again. Oh, see, this is what I want. <laughs> Rambo, Rambo the driving ape is in pools, hot tubs, and beaches. I'm not dissing the streamers that do this shit, by the way. I mean, if it's in Twitch, if it's in Twitch guidelines, it's in Twitch guidelines. You know, do whatever the fuck. The lime green. Like it's, it's, I don't know. I didn't like it. It. Really, it doesn't really matter. Um. I just find it wild when, like, sometimes you pull up a Twitch stream and it's, like, somebody that's, like, actually fucking naked. Or almost naked. Just because that used to be, they used to be so strict on that shit. Like, if you were, like, you used to not be able to be shirtless on Twitch. Like, I remember I got a warning one time because I went like this. Like, when I got mad, I went like this. And my nipples showed. And they got mad at me. But now it's, like... You could do whatever. Show the jiggle machine. Bro, I don't want to show... I'm not showing the jiggle machine. If I show the jiggle machine, that YouTube video is over for. All right, we're going to move on. K-Bond for the sub. Boo Baker for the sub. Oliver's for the sub. Jazza and Toto for the sub. And Crept and JP for the sub. People used to be scared about showing feet. Yeah. I When I started on Twitch, uh, because I started on Twitch in late 2020, you couldn't show your feet, really, unless it was, like, accidental or something like that. You couldn't... um. You could be shirtless. Like, you couldn't fucking do almost anything. Like, it, you could be shirtless, but you could be, like, your nipples couldn't show. Um, and shit like that. 
How did it devolve so rapidly? Well, I think it used to be too strict. I think the idea that it was like your feet couldn't be in, like, I understand, oh, yeah, you're not supposed to be going like, like fucking, like, like grippers like that or some shit. Like, I understand that. But as, at the same time, I, I think if it's like, oh, I'm like, fucking walking or something or i'm doing push-ups and i move my screen down when somebody redeems it oh my feet can't be on cam like that was crazy uh so i think them getting rid of that but then they think they went from one one side to the exact opposite of the other not the exact opposite because the exact opposite would be like somebody like actually being fucking naked but um it went from like almost no capability to like at all show your body to like now you can basically show almost anything Somebody's going to clip that. Yeah. You know what also scares me uh, is I did. I, I just showed my feet on screen and there is probably going to be one dude that's like actually into that shit. Like, I know a lot of y'all are joking, but there's like there's like one to two guys. I've I you know, I've seen I've seen some pages that are like into that shit uh, and they've posted me and I'm like, oof, man. Oof. Yeah. Ah, you know, it's whatever, though. <sighs> Ah, it's whatever, you know. That dude is me. No, it is not. I hope it's not. All right. Chat, hold up. We need to lock in for the next video here. We need to get off, off of this fucking topic here. Un momento. Un momento. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. All right. Somebody said, is that a slur? I got to Google that word. <laughs> is it a slur? Because I don't want to say it. Can I spell it? <sighs> what word? They called me a different version of a prostitute. Like, imagine in the old ages, like, a guy with a uh, a handlebar mustache, like, caught his wife cheating. He'd be like, oh, you. No, not, not a hooker. The other word. Oh, I could just show my screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that makes more sense. Is this a slur? No, right? I don't know. But like it's the older version of calling somebody a prostitute. No, yeah, I didn't. I didn't presume. I don't. I don't know though. I just don't want to say. I don't want to be like, oh yeah. I don't, just say it out loud and then be like, oh fuck, you know. Picks him up for the sub rider for the three. Hundred thousand channel point redemption. Joe Jiggle machine. I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna have a Joe Jiggle redemption. I'm sorry. That is not gonna. That's not gonna be on the Joe Bart stream. Somebody also said earlier, I think it was you kinkin, he was like, oh, we only have four videos left. Yeah, but a lot of the videos are long. Like, we have this video about Airbnbs, but this one's 31 minutes, and this one's 26 minutes. I don't know if we're going to watch this whole one, but uh, then if we if we don't, we'll probably just add another one. But I got to go piss real quick, chat. Count me down 30 fucking seconds.
we're back. Oh. Oh my God. Hold up. Hold up. What was that song name? Can't Tell Me Nothing by Kanye. Do you memento? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. My shit's glitching. One second. My apologies. All right, lock back in here, chat. Ugh, next video. Jesus, dude. Okay. Get for the three. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you, too. Pick some up for the sub rider for the three. All right. Next one. Um, Delete Airbnb. Bring back hotels. A big tug video. W big tug. Somebody just spam Joe, you fucking stink. We'll see you. We'll see you later, pal. We'll see you later, pal. Uh, all right. Have you seen Dr. Phil asking for an icon skin? I have. Lock in here, chat. Delete Airbnb. Bring back hotel. Oh, wait. Yeah. Delete Air. Oh, my God. I can't fucking read. If this becomes a YouTube video. We're going to rewind. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Delete Airbnb. Bring back hotels. Big talk video. Airbnb is garbage nonsense that I have hated since its inception. I hated it before it ruined the housing market, just purely off its rancid vibes. I mean, if you think about it, in the last 30 years, technology has rarely ever given us anything new. Ubers are just taxis with more. Ubers are just taxis, uh, but there's, there's, they just have a higher capability of going anywhere rather than you having to call a taxi service, which is the biggest pain in the ass ever. You could just fucking order an Uber on your phone. It's just a simpler taxi. I like, the, I, I do have my fucking issues with Airbnb that I'll rant about, but I will say the idea of Airbnbs are pretty cool because. They're cooler than hotels. Not every Airbnb, obviously, but, like, some Airbnbs are fucking sick. Like, tree houses and fucking underground homes. They're just really nice houses with, like, pools, and they're bigger, and they hold more people. Like, running, a, if you have a big group, running an Airbnb makes more sense than going to a hotel. But at the same time, uh, Airbnbs blow uh, for many fucking reasons, including uh, the service fees. They're way too expensive. The cleaning fee is fucking bullshit. They'll charge you $200 to clean a fucking two-person Airbnb. Buddy, what are we fucking getting the Ghostbusters to come in here and do a fucking seance? What are we getting rid of? A what, are, what are we exterminating a, de a demon? Are we getting rid of fucking uh, a, a, a supernatural being in here? $200 to fucking clean an Airbnb? What the fuck is that? Right? On top of that, then I got to clean it, right? Why do I got to clean the Airbnb? I run an Airbnb. I'm spending $400 a fucking day to stay at this stupid-ass Airbnb. And you tell me I have to fucking sweep the floor, bag the trash, wash the dishes, bitch. And and, and, and at the end of the Airbnb, they're always like, it's a home. It's, it's a home. Remember that. Yeah, bitch. It's a home. Remember that. And I paid $400 fucking dollars to stay at this goddamn fucking home. Uh, why do I have to clean the... You're, pay you're making me pay a cleaning fee, but I also have to clean. Makes no sense. I'll rant more about it. I'm, I'll let him talk for a little bit. Demira for the sub. Or stains and cigarette stench. A podcast is just talk radio with way less talented hosts. And chat GPT is just taking words from the internet, mangling them together and throwing them back out there. It's just re recycling. Most big tech solutions are just rebrands of things we used to have. And Airbnb is no exception. Staying at an Airbnb is like having a sleepover in your high school friend's basement. Except your high school friend is not there, but his overbearing father yeah, is. Yeah, if you stay at a shitty Airbnb. You ever stay at an Airbnb before? I mean, a lot of you guys probably haven't but i've stayed at airbnbs before that are just homes and it's like not like a cool airbnb home like someone's home 
and it's not enjoyable. Uh, because it feels like you're not, it doesn't even feel like there's Airbnbs that feel like hotels or getaways. And that was like one of the ones that I was at, um, in PA, it was nice. Right. But then there's Airbnbs you stay at for like a one day thing when it's like, I need somewhere to sleep and it's like somebody's fucking house and it'll have like their paintings and like their shit. And it's like all this, it's like this fucking old person vibe. It's like, ugh. And instead of playing Never Have I Ever, he's just going to be leaving passive aggressive sticky notes everywhere. Airbnb is the only platform that- They always have that one door locked. That always scares me. Every, every Airbnb I've ever been to has a door that I can't get into. And it scares me. Because I always think, what if someone's in there? One time I was really skeezed out by an Airbnb and I put a chair against the door. Because I was like, if somebody's in there, they're not fucking getting out. No, it wasn't like Barbarian where it was like it opened up into a basement that was like a catacombs with a naked incest monster. That I'm not fearful of that. I'm fearful of checking into an Airbnb and the locked door actually just has a guy that's standing there waiting for me to fall asleep to come and fucking kill me. You pay? I know realistically it's probably just a cleaning closet or like the electrical box, but to do chores it's insane wash the sheets clean the bathroom do the dishes i don't even do most of these things in my own apartment and you have to do this entire garbage list of not fun activities because at the end of it they rate you what, what do you mean you rate me if i stay at a hotel i rate the hotel it's not like the cleaning ladies like get off their shift and write down on their blog all the gross shit i did i'm pretty sure that's against the hippocratic oath we had it right the first time hotels are a place where you can do whatever you want however you want to do it i mean you can't you know set fire to the drapes and put the bath mat in the toilet but besides that that you're, you're clear sailing. So come with me as I explain why hotels are one of the most underrated pleasures of the modern era. Today we're going- Hotels are fucking amazing because you could borderline trash that shit and just leave. Like if you stay at a hotel, I'm not saying you should be a dickhead, but you don't have to wash the sheets. You don't have to fucking put stuff away. You just fucking check in. You know, you live there for two days and then you fuck off and they clean the hotel. Right? When you're at an Airbnb, it's like, remember to take the trash out and the fucking trash can's fucking 40 miles away. Well, I stayed at an Airbnb in the South one time, and they were like, remember to take the trash out. Bitch, it was a dumpster a half a mile away. A half a mile away. I was like, dude, why am I, I can't just leave the trash in the bag here and then you go fucking do it? Why? And, and if I don't do it, then they're going to charge me. Right? It's not like if I don't do it, they're going to rate me poorly. If I don't do it, they're going to charge me an extra fee that I have to pay. Like, I understand having those safety things in place for Airbnb owners because a lot of people that go to Airbnbs are fucking loser cucks. And it's a bunch of people that just want to waste money that they don't have and they end up fucking trashing the place and not wanting to pay. And in that scenario, yeah, Airbnb should fuck them over. But... In my scenario, when I just don't want to fucking throw a trash bag out and walk half a mile because, uh, I don't know, I spent fucking $600 to stay at this fucking two-person Airbnb and you're making me fucking do work for you when you already charged me a cleaning fee, it's kind of fucking annoying, right? What analog on the hospitality industry. I love hotels. I, it's almost a fetish at this point. I love them so much. So how do I say this without sounding creepy? Staying at hotels inflate my ego. I don't think I accomplished the task I set out to do there. But there's just a bunch of things that happen in hotels that make me feel like a 1930s starlet at the peak of the golden age of Hollywood. Shoving a crisp $5 bill into the bellhop's hand, getting called sir when I check in at the desk. I get to pretend I'm a giant when I use those tiny bottles of shampoo in the shower and that's not- Dude, and you pull up, cause I don't make- nobody ma do you guys make your bed? I don't make my bed. Right, I think it's fucking pointless. But when I pull up to an air- or to a hotel, I mean same thing with an Airbnb, but when I pull up to a hotel, I open that door, it's just got the lamps are on. I turn the lights on, right? And I walk into the bathrooms all nice. And the bed's made. And the fuck, I could open up the curtains. I'm like, ah, oh, this fucking. You know, and that's like, it's like I get to stay at so, it's like I get to stay somewhere else, but I'm not at somebody's home, right? I'm like in a nice area that I could just chill at. It's not really a luxury thing that's cold. Yeah, they usually got that shit at like 60 to 66 degrees more of a me thing but it's still really fun in the little paper cups they have in your room and they're covered in plastic and you get to unwrap them like it's a gift of hydration it's not good for the environment but it is fun hotels are all about the accommodations they can't help but accommodate you it's in their nature and all that stuff is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all the fun stuff that gets me jazzed up about staying in a hotel i mean first of all no rules as i stated earlier whereas any standard airbnb has a binder full of checkout rules which is
is a term that makes me want to do a cannonball into a bed of nails. Traditional hotels don't even have a binder. Nah, I stayed at two Airbnbs before that all they said was put the sheets on the floor. And I went, you're a saint. You're not going to have me wash the dishes and, and fucking take your car out to go get it washed. And, and tell the maid, ask the maid how her day was when she starts cleaning it and all this other shit. Like, I gotta fucking do all this shit. Oh, fuck that. There, I've been at ones where they only, let, they only gotta make me do two things. I'm like, this is fucking amazing. Hotels are also sick because I'll, I'll tour, right? Airbnb, really nice. Higher enjoyment factor, enjoying the room, right? When I walk into an, if that didn't make sense, let me rephrase. I walk into an Airbnb. My excitement level is higher at an Airbnb than walking into a hotel. But once I scroll the Airbnb and I see everything that's going around, you know, I'm done. But if I'm at a hotel, I go see the room and then I go see the free breakfast. And then I go see the gym that I'm not going to use. And then I walk around and I go see the backyard that they have and the nice little lounge area that I'm also not going to use. And I walk around and I say, oh, that's a nice pool. Oh, they have a, a nice hot tub that I'm probably not going to get into, you know, but it's still nice to see. Because I don't want to get in the hot tub because there's going to be an old guy that chills there for four hours at night. And it's kind of fucking weird if I'm doing a communal hot tub. Don't really like that aspect of things. You know, if I'm in a... I could be in a pool with somebody I don't know. But I don't want to be in a hot tub with somebody I don't know. Because it's fucking awkward. So, you know, it's still nice that it's there, though. So I keep moseying on, right? And then I go on the elevator. I go up a floor. You know, it's fucking great. It's fucking great. M. Skulk for the sub. Poopy for the sub. Ava for the sub. Greek for the three. Can you play Val today? No. Charlie for the three. The Airbnbs that fully smell like somebody's family house are the worst. Yeah, that is bad. The Mira and Ray for the sub get for the three. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I already read that. I might do Val next week. Uh, today's reacts. Tomorrow is the second to last modded uh, Minecraft uh, stream this season. Uh, we're going to be fighting bosses in the weather. Probably making a beacon and some shit. Uh, and then we'll have one more stream of it. Might do a, a horror mod pack that Cloak has for me uh, for Minecraft soon. Uh, but we'll probably take a break from Minecraft so we can play the South Park game for a bit. Uh, Tuesday is going to be uh, an FMV game, some random games, maybe a scary game. Wednesday is going to be Roblox Horror, Itch Horror, Escape the Vacuums with Max. Thursday, I'm getting a tattoo. Friday's React. Saturday's VR, and Sunday is React. Next, next Monday is the last uh, MC uh, modded stream. We might do Val next week, though, on, like, uh, Tuesday. Maybe Tuesday. In your room. And if they do, it's full of yummy treats. You can Maybe, though. Order for room service or fun things to do in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is kind of an oxymoron, but I appreciate the effort. The freedom and lack of rules gives new life to any man, woman, or non-binary buckaroo that has been stuck in a lifestyle of compromise in a cubicle or a relationship. Go ahead and jump on the bed. But here's where Airbnbs beat hotels. They have a little notebook, and it has every guest that's ever stayed there. And they write their little messages to me. I'm gonna say, hi, my name's Frank. I'm here with my wife, Lisa. We're from Frankfurt, Germany or some shit. And I'll go, wow, wow, that's cool, right? And then I scroll over and then it's somebody just thanking the Airbnb host. And I'm like, ugh, ugh, tell me your life story. And then, and then I go to one and it's like a boring ass family from Idaho. Flip, flip, couple from Switzerland. Huh, now that's intriguing. And then they talk about their lives, you know? It's like I people watch, but I'm like, I'm just reading the people that stayed here. Bed, sneeze a little too loud. Read the Bible in the nightstand as a goof or whatever. I, wh whatever you want to do with that. And if you do eventually get a little too rowdy, all they do is send a guy up to your room to politely ask you to calm down. That's all they got to do. If you try and pull a fun all-nighter at an Airbnb, they will not so politely kick you out to the street and not even refund you. Another fun thing about hotels, the minibar, an iconic symbol of luxurious hedonism. Popularized by the Hong Kong Hilton Hotel in 1947, these staples of hotel life have been thrilling guests for decades. Once Hilton started putting these things in every hotel room, they reported a 500% increase. Oh, the mini bar in the Mex it, when I was in Mexico this past summer, oh the mini bar was my fucking shit. I would pull I would I would leave we would I wouldn't even know that they came, right? We would leave for 10 minutes with like an empty mini bar. I'd come back, there's Dos Equis, Heineken, uh the Mexican Coca-Colas and the spa. I'm like Oh shit. And then I'd fucking whip out my flip-flop that has a bottle opener on the bottom and fucking crack one open. Fucking the best. It's in both beverage and food sales, and of course they did. Don't you have to pay for it? Well, it depends on the hotel. I was at an all-inclusive resort, so no. That's the beauty of all-inclusive resorts. If you don't go to one that's shitty, oh. 
you just fucking drink and eat as much as you want. Wouldn't want to get hammered off of tiny bottles of booze and convenient cans of Coca-Cola. I mean, it's so cute and adorable. Now, is everything in the mini bar extremely overpriced and kind of a letdown when you eventually? Yeah, that sucks. That that part of it does suck. When you if you're at one where you have to pay for it, you eat it. Of course, but that's kind of the point. It's a little naughty to take a two dollar nip of vodka that costs eight dollars out of a mini bar fridge, but you're on vacation, baby. You came out to spend money. If you didn't want to spend money, you'd be still at home. In for a penny, in for a pound. Start drinking, pussy. Another fun thing about hotels is the room service. You're not gonna get that. At Airbnb, you're gonna get a confused Uber Eats delivery guy who can't find you. Who needs that lukewarm running late McDonald's delivery order when you can just order hot and fresh ready food right to your room? Overpriced, but you can still do it. Most of them serve the classics, burgers and fries, steaks. Hell, some of them have all day breakfast. That gets me so excited. If I can get pancakes and eggs at any hour of the day, I'll pay a million dollars. Sign me up, daddy. And with certain hotels, room service doesn't end with the food. The Milestone Hotel in London offers in-room private performances by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra? Okay, I would not want that though. I would not I would not be chilling at my hotel and I'd request people to come with fucking instruments and play for me. It's a little awkward that you just sit there while they play music, but an experience nonetheless. At the Parkland Hotel in New York, all you have to do is dial five on the phone in the room and you will be connected to the caviar hotline, which is a real thing. They'll offer you a, a variety of caviars that they will bring up to the room for you. Now, I personally find caviar disgusting. Those hotel rooms have to be so expensive if they have a fucking caviar hotline. But it's more about the fact that they'll do it rather than actually getting it. And of course, how- It would be cool if you're stoned though. No, it would not. No, it would not. If I, that would be even more terrifying. If I was not high and I called people to show up to my hotel room and play music for me, it would be pretty awkward. Now, if I'm high and they pull up and they start playing and I feel the anxiety build in my chest because I no longer want them to be here three minutes into their performance and I know that they're going to be playing for me for the next 30 minutes and I also have to take a piss and I don't want to leave because I don't want to be rude. Right? Because I, because I just got them to come up five floors to play for me, and they brought that fucking fat-ass instrument that's like 60 pounds. And this guy's been kind of waiting to fucking jam out, right? You know, because not many people are probably ordering this. And, you know, I could bring up a million issues that would start racing through my head. How could we forget the amenities that come with any hotel? We got the pool. We got the fitness center. We got that weird business center thing that no one really uses, but it's kind of quaint and adorable. One of my favorite things about hotels is their scrappy little gyms. They're legally allowed to be called fitness centers because they got two treadmills, a weird array of dumbbells, and one of those bouncy yoga balls that you can sit on, and that's fine by me. People are never in there because, frankly, it's awful, but that's exactly what a fella like me is looking for. When I almost throw up from exhaustion from jogging on the treadmill for 30 minutes, I don't want anyone near me when I do that, and that's why those hotels fitness centers are perfect for an out of shape piece of shit like me and then we have the perfect over chlorinated hotel pool which you know brings back memories yes it might be negative 20 degrees in upstate new york right now but that's no reason to not take a tiny little dip in a hot hotel pool you open those swinging doors get blasted in the face with what i can only assume is a notch below mustard gas get acclimated <laughs> to the yeah dude you sit in that fucking inside hotel pool room for more than 20 minutes and you're you, you're probably gonna start losing consciousness climate jump in the pool and get those butterflies in baby you got some work to do yeah there's usually a bunch of annoying kids running around the pool but you can just yell at them their parents aren't there these are hotel pool children they're barely even people and when you're done with your soak you head on right over to that, that charmingly inefficient business center check your email every 30 seconds due to horrible wi-fi print some shit out for some reason take a trip to the past and send a fax for why do they have that machine there Who's still using that? Truly, hotels have everything a man would need to feel like a king for a night. But hotels are not created equal. Each brand has their own uh, pros and cons. And wouldn't you like me to rank them for you? I'll do that soon, but first we have an ad. I'm sorry, that was mean, but I, we're going to do an ad now. Hey, is there any- Big talk, I'm sorry. Big talk, I'm sorry, I'm skipping it. Oh, is it a DraftKings ad? I, already, I literally did that exact ad. Service, I'd be a little criteria, and I kind of think that's a crime, because if you end up going to a five-star hotel and get three-star service, I'd be a little niffed. I'd be a little stiffy about that. That's not the way. Wait, hold up. Five stars and call themselves a We gotta rewind. We gotta rewind here, chat. We missed some stuff. They like to brag about. Those are horse shit. Those are kind of, those are made up. The points don't matter. There's no real general consensus or one true authority on who gives those ratings. I mean, there is. There's AAA and Forbes who are like the, the authority on the situation. But hotels, they'll just take any website or reviewer that gave them five stars and call themselves a five-star hotel. Like they just, they, they don't care. There's no standardized criteria. And I kind of think that's a crime because if you yeah. end up going to a five-star hotel and get three-star service, I'd be a little niffed. 
I'd be a little stiffy about that. That's not the word. So based on a very stringent set of criteria, I'm going to provide the quintessential star rating for some popular hotel chains. So let me introduce you to the tug rating and notability scale. I promise you the title came before the acronym. I hope I didn't offend anyone. Up first, we have Hilton Hotels. What a classic. I mean, first of all, we got to mention the fact that Hilton Hotels gave us Paris Hilton, notable Nepo baby of the early 2000s. She had a great reign as a tabloid and reality TV. Oh God, I've never liked low waist jeans. Where is that? First, we have Hilton Hotels. What a classic. I mean, first of all, we got to mention the fact that Hilton Hotels gave us Paris Hilton. I just never thought these jeans look good on anyone. Like, it just, it, it, it doesn't fit, it, it's, it's so, it's so, it's, it's not sitting right. Like, it should sit around your waist, why is it sitting three inches below? Like, I know it's, like, fashionable, but I just don't get it. Notable Nepo baby of the early 2000s. She had a great reign as a tabloid in reality. You're a man, shut the fuck up. I know I'm a man. I know it's a bad take, right? But I'm still allowed to share my take. TV star and also had her own pop album which sold 600,000 copies, which is crazy. But people were dying for any skinny white woman to spit on them in the early 2000s. So I see like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Like it just, it, dude, you want my honest take? Low waisted jeans look like you're just wearing like your little cousin's jeans and they don't fit you. Like, you forgot your pants, and now you're wearing your cousin's jeans that are, like, he's, like, they're, like, two sizes smaller, and they don't fit, and so, like, you have to, like, sag them a little bit, and now your underwear shows. <laughs> Dude, dead ass. Like, that's what they look like. And so I kind of understand. But that number pales in comparison to the 30 million cookies that Hilton Doubletree Hotels give away to guests every year. This is a real thing. Apparently, these places are known for their cookies, and people really, really f with these cookies. The recipe for these cookies was apparently a really well-guarded secret, like KFC or Coca-Cola. I've never had one of these cookies, but apparently it's been compared to a warm summer day in your mouth or crack cocaine. And then in 2019, they released the recipe for the cookies during the COVID lockdown because I assumed they thought the world was ending because no one was staying at hotels. So I kind of get it. Kind of sad, though. Also, Hilton is on track to be the first hotel in space, which is crazy. Recently, Hilton struck a deal with NASA and Lockheed Martin to design the astronaut living quarters on private space stations. Lockheed Martin, known for fun space hotels and nothing else. So they gave us Paris Hilton cookies and space hotels. That's pretty cool. I'll give it a six out of 10. How would you even check into a space hotel? I'm not gonna be ranking these places on what the hotels are actually like, just the weird things that come with them if you haven't noticed yet. And then we have Trump Tower. So, hey, li hey, listen, okay, listen, hey. I'm talking about the goddamn buildings, not the dude. So let's just break down the facts. The Trump Hotel in Vegas is popular, but one of the only hotels uh, in Las Vegas that doesn't have a casino attached to it, which is weird until you realize that he tried to do a bunch of hotels with casinos attached to them in the 80s at Atlantic City, and they all failed. So, you know, he probably was a little God, gun- Atlantic City is such a fucking shithole. Shy about the whole situation. He also- uh, The casinos, like, I go, I that's where I gamble, because it's like the closest big strip casino in the Northeast right but oh my god going like it, the casinos are nice everything outside and around the casinos is bad so own the new york Not the whole city but it's like dude you'll fucking you'll be right next to the borgata not the borgata say you're right next to like the tropicana right in atlantic city and you fucking leave the tropicana to get in an uber and ride an hour and a half home right while you're waiting, yeah, you're going to see, like, a, a lot of drug addicts or, or stuff like that. That's just in any big city. But also, every house around, every house and every building around the casinos are 60 years old, run down, falling apart, um, shit's broken. It's everything around it looks like it's it's been walking the walking dead for fucking 50 years. And nothing's been renovated. Like, the casinos are in pristine condition, and they're new and fancy, and they're worth millions of dollars. And then everything right next to the casinos, literally, like, I'm talking fucking 20 yards away, is fucking shit. Like, absolute shit. 
Park Plaza Hotel, which uh, he doesn't anymore, but it was featured in Home Alone 2, pretty baller. He also had a cameo in the film uh, f while owning the hotel, so I get that counts for something. Although Chris Columbus did say that Trump bullied his way to get that cameo, uh, and Trump says he didn't, so I don't know. We're not getting into that. Also, almost every one of the hotels has Trump's name plastered on the side of them, which is uh, kind of baller in an evil villain kind of way. Like, I'd imagine Biff in Back to the Future 2 would do the same kind of thing with his giant building, and I think he did. I don't know. I might be misremembering that. I think he might be based off of Trump in that movie. And also, in 2022, my brother came to visit me in Chicago and he stayed in the Trump Tower because he thought it'd be a really nice thing to do. And he got the city view room because he wanted a good view of the city. And he got to the hotel and he looked out the window and he had no view of the city. It was just a view of the river. And he said, <laughs> why is this the situation? And they told him, oh, if you wanted a view of the city, you should have got a river view room. And he said, what the f are you talking about? And then my friend who lived in the residential part of the Trump Tower needed a chair that I, I bought for him. So I tried to bring the chair up to him and they stopped us in the lobby and tried to take the chair away from me. And they said it was illegal for me to bring a chair up there. And it was a big situation. And my brother finally said, f it, arrest us. We're going up to that room with the chair. And then we did and we went up and they didn't do anything about it. But a lady in the, in the uh, elevator who was a huge Trump supporter told us we're f***ing losers. And my brother went off on her, called her, called her a lot of mean names. <laughs> yeah. uh, so two out of 10, f*** that place, f*** that place. And then we have the Marriott, the compromise of the family vacation. The Marriott company, and this is not a joke, started out as a root beer stand in 1927. Nothing says luxury like a crisp mug of bark. The root beer stand then- Moist Critical posted another Twitch video. No, he did not. Like just now. Twitch continues to evolve. I know I'm Oh my god. Do we watch this too? He just posted it. We'll watch it after. Started to sell food in the winter to make up for slow sales and eventually became the first catering service for airlines. We're still off track to get to hotels, but I'm sure this will circle back. And then in 1957, JW Marriott opened his first hotel and now they own 30 brands and over 8,000 properties. Okay, so none of that matter. The root beer and the food, none of that. How did they make the business leap to, okay, whatever. Marriott also owns the hotel brand Moxie, which does a lot of weird shit. They have something called ASMR bedtime stories where they get B-list celebrities to whisper you to sleep, which is a little horny. They also have a thing called Hotel Heist, which is a thing where they blindfold guests and escort them into their bedrooms to hear, quote, thrilling stories. Started out with root beer. I don't know how we got here. And despite all the horny stuff I just said, the Marriott family are devout Mormons. Would not have guessed that. And also the Marriott Hotel are gonna be the first people to institute robot butlers, which is a little, just crazy. So we got Mormons, robots, airline food, uh, root robot beer. Robot butlers. Your ASMR and kidnapping. I would just yoink the food off the fucking plate of the butler. Uh, guests. So all of that's kind of cool. But the first thing I think about Marriott is crappy airline hotels. So uh, four out of 10. And finally, we have Sheridan, a kind of upper class hotel, I think, that my mom would make me stay at when I was a kid because she would spend her Amex points on it and I would be happy to do so. Amex or Amex, whatever. The fact of the matter is I have a lot of good memories there and I would give it a seven out of 10, except for the fact that I just read that Marriott owns it. So um, I guess that doesn't really count. Oh, they also own the Ritz. Oh, they own like every other hotel that's I feel like that shouldn't be allowed. Like company, it's the same thing with like food brands. Like this Marriott owns all of these other hotels and you think that you have like a choice of different fucking businesses, but you don't. Like it's just, you're like, go, if you go to any of these, you're fucking, you're going to the Marriott. That's not a Hilton or a Trump. That's not good. Marriott Bonvoy, that's like a monopoly. Okay. All right, every time I make one of these videos, I always circle back to end stage capitalism and I try and avoid it, but Jesus Christ, it's hard to avoid when things like this keep sneaking through. On to the next segment. So I thought I'd end this video with something a little silly because I am an internet clown and God forbid I don't dance for the court. So while doing my research, I found a bunch of crazy ass hotels that I found insanely interesting and now I'm passing the comedy savings on to you. Quick note, I do not like leaving the country so I do not have firsthand experience of going to any of these hotels. So if any of my followers would like to follow up and go and do those things for me, I would appreciate that because I can live vicariously through people who respect me for some reason. Also, quick note, that graphic I just pulled to show my subscriber number, it's on this website that has all my YouTube stats on it and for some some reason it's telling people that I'm making fifty three to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month. I don't know where it's getting these numbers. I'm not making that much. I just want people to know that this is inaccurate. Holy shit! I would not be making videos. I'd be in Cabo. I'd be partying it up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right, back to the video. Up first, we have the seven twenty seven fuselage home. Um, this is what it looks like. 
it's a plane. It's a plane you can sleep in. A refurbished Boeing 727 that for some reason someone turned into a hotel. It's shockingly nice on the inside, which I was not expecting. I assumed it to be rusted out metal and just a bunch of coconut crabs that would eat you while you fell asleep. It has two beautiful bedrooms and sits 50 feet above the Costa Rican jungle. Now I know I don't like jungles. I've talked about God, it. being in the jungle. You're in like the depths of the jungle. That would fucking scare me. For in certain videos, but this jungle is timid and it has sloths and monkeys. So it gets a pass. It also has a little wooden deck on one of the wings, which is cute, so you can get a good view of the ocean and the jungle, because you can't really get a good view from the inside, because it's an airplane, and airplanes have tiny little windows. And I, I, I feel like that was a design flaw, but they figured it out by just putting wood on the wing. And also, you can technically say you spent your vacation in a cabin. Because it's a, it's a te, te, you know, you get whatever, fuck. Then we have Luda Salada. Right next to the world's largest salt flat in Bolivia, it is actually a hotel completely made out of salt. Is that right? That can't be true. The walls are- I definitely have to lick the wall. I'd have to lick the wall just to see, you know? Maybe try and make a dent. I feel like if you th started putting water, it would like melt, it would melt the fucking, uh, the, the fucking walls. Floors are salt. Yeah, everything is salt. Okay, that's odd. I mean, it's pretty much a regular hotel besides that. It's got Wi-Fi, concierge, bedrooms. It's just everything's a little bit saltier. But also when it rains, the salt flat next to the hotel becomes like a beautiful mirror that reflects the sky. And it's like a once in a lifetime experience to see that kind of thing. But I would also imagine that rainwater hitting a hotel completely made out of salt would do something horrendous to the structural integrity of yeah. the- Yeah, now it's probably- it's probably salt mixed with something else. There's no way it's just a fucking salt structure because they have like blocks here. Like they fucking made these. Uh, uh, building. But you know, I'm not an architect or a chef, so I wouldn't know. And also they filmed The Last Jedi here. So that's fun. If you're a self-hating nerd, you can get a kick out of it. And then we have the Liberty, which is sadly the most Boston hotel ever conceived. A giant middle finger to anyone who's been swept up in mass incarceration. People in Boston will pay money to spend the night in the old Charles Street Jail, like the place criminals are forced to go. Of course, the rooms are now swankier than they were when the jail first opened in 1851. Just take a look at them. But still, you know, haunted vibes. I mean, it does look fancy as fuck, honestly. Rancid haunted vibes that I want no part of. And I'm I'm glad they updated the rooms because in 1973, the poor living conditions of the jail were found to violate the prisoner's human right, which is why in 1990, they abandoned the place. And then some weird asshole decided to make a hotel out of it. And then finally, we have the Farlada Crane Hotel in Amsterdam. So as we know, people visit Amsterdam for two things, drugs and sex. Let's not kid ourselves. Like, I'm sure they have some nice museums, but the red light district is right there. And you can- Don't they have uh, prostitutes or uh, in um, Amsterdam that like stand at the windows? like naked and try and get you to come inside. I gotta look that up. Does Amsterdam, but it's not called, or it's brothels. Have brothel women stand at the windows. In Amsterdam, the traditional window prostitution neighborhoods are in the red light district, the area around the Singel and the Rio del Cade. I definitely said that fucking wrong. Yeah, 800 prostitutes work in Amsterdam. Half of them are behind the window girls. The girls stand behind red-lit glass doors with red curtains and fancy outfits to attract customers to come in and pay for sex. Wow. Just eat mushrooms and no one's gonna yell at you. How is that not illegal? Because it's legal in Amsterdam? That's why when that's why when you're in your 20s and your friends go, let's go to fucking Amsterdam. It's because basically everything you could fucking think of is legal in Amsterdam. You can take mushrooms in Amsterdam. You can like buy mushrooms on a street corner in Amsterdam and fucking trip balls on like a fucking Tuesday afternoon uh, and just just chill, you know. But while you're there, why not have mushroom and do sex on a 160 foot crane? Why not do that? A nine-year renovation project turned this crane into an exclusive, luxurious spot for anyone who wants to spend a night in, in hell. An elevator takes you directly to your room, which is good because you don't have to spend that much time feeling the uh, panic-induced vertigo that you will feel. And also, fun fact, the rooms sway in the wind. They, they move when the wind That's blows, so you really scary. feel safe and cozy. That wouldn't make me cry or throw up at all. That's just crazy. It's crazy that you could take mushrooms and then go and sleep in a room that is swaying in the wind. I can't think of a worse way to, and it's like you're trying to induce psychosis. It's like you're trying to lose your mind. So there you have it. We lost the plot a little bit, but Airbnb sucks, and regular hotels are the, the, the bee's knees. They are the balls. I mean, at this point, Airbnb doesn't even save you money. Like, that was the whole point in the beginning, and now Airbnbs are as expensive as hotels. So just get a hotel. They're gonna- they're more they're expensive. Airbnbs were meant to save money too, but Airbnbs just have so many fees now. I think Airbnbs are still worth it if A, you have a group, 
uh, that is like larger than four, four to six people, or B, you want to just say somewhere really cool, because uh, like a lot of Airbnbs themselves are not only the hotel but the experience, and so you're selling an experience, you're not selling a hotel. Chaz for the five, you should check how much the website thinks you make a month. It's definitely gonna be way off because if it said he makes fifty to one hundred fifty k a month, I don't even make on the, the top end of that shit, and he um posts once a week. I post, like, four times a week. Chase for the three. I use my mom's premium YouTube account to download some of your VODs. Thank you for getting me through a three-hour plane ride trip. No problem. Evil Green for the three. Why can't I say skip in your chat? Uh, you should be able to say skip. Parade for the five. Fortnite, Jake for the three. Trump's Hotel sucks. G Garfield, or G Car Faded. Uh, M Skulk, Nathan, Poopy, and Ava for the sub. Uh, all right. We'll watch uh, Moist Critical's video now. That was a fucking good-ass video. Now we're back into this fucking shit. Oh, my gosh. What else has developed? I'm looking more disheveled than... You can't say it? Mods, can you unban the word skip? Usual today, very raggedy. I look like I just crawled out of Jumanji, and I'm wondering what year it is. But before I take a shower, I think it's important that I address something, because yesterday, my Twitter mentions were set ablaze. I was nonstop flooded with demands to speak on a new potential Twitch meta that was beginning to blossom. Feast your eyes on the glory of gaming. And oh, is she playing the game on her ass? When this was a uh, floating around Twitter, I was like the power. Five gifteds equals creamy treat. Puff girls and Twitter was the mayor. They wouldn't stop ringing my hotline trying to alert me to this like it was some kind of emergency that I needed to speak on. So five days ago, I made a video called Twitch is Evolving. Fun fact, you actually can't find that video just by searching for it because it was too risque for YouTube, I suppose. So it no longer shows up in any search algorithms. You can only find it by going directly to my channel. And the video was just me talking and goofing about a stream that I was made aware of while I was live. That a streamer was basically just showing their whole brown balloon knot with a little bit of Valorant gameplay. And I was in disbelief, so I went to check it out to confirm this. And turns out that myth was not busted. It was just a bunch of fucking nuts in there that were. It was a very sexual stream by design. And I made a video just kind of talking about it because it was super silly. And also, it turns out that the streamer I was focusing on in that video, her name is Strawberry Tabby... May not have actually been the creator of this. I got Yeah, a... no, I I know she used to make like regular Twitch content. Uh and then re like regulated themselves into that realm of the content. Is this the person that created it? That's a profile. Picture. This tweet the following day from a streamer named Asian Hi Pen, love your videos, but how come all these metas I've created on Twitch? Oh, she did it. Asian Bunny who said that she was actually the one that created not only this meta that I was talking about with like the butthole camera and all of that, but also the previous topless meta. So it seems- Wow. Well, I don't think, I don't know, I don't know if these streamers are claiming that they created the meta. I think Charlie just didn't know who did it, but that's crazy. She started three, like two or three different metas on Twitch of- you know, showing yourself to a degree to make content. Asian Bunny may actually be- Gonna trademark it? I don't know if you'd be able to trademark doing topless streams. Be the innovator, nay, the imagineer behind some of these, these like very sexual Twitch metas. But anyway, I think it's important context before getting into like the recent thing we're going to talk about to explain why I'm being alerted to all of this now. So that video, Twitch is Evolving, to summarize what it was without showing you, because apparently that's frowned upon on YouTube to showcase that, even though it was fine for Twitch. She had a dual cam setup, one where it was her in like the smallest bikini mankind has ever dreamed up. It makes hentai and anime games look weak in comparison to the reality here. She had like the smallest bikini ever for her top, and she had that cam on the left, basically like honkers jumbotron on the left and on the right she came up with something the world has never seen before it was basically a colonoscopy cam so she had her ass pushed in front of an iphone which i didn't even know was an iphone at the time i legitimately thought it was like a black magic 8k camera oh that's what he was saying in the beginning of the video i guess shit was ready for imax and again with like the tightest string bikini ever that was wedging her ass crack that fabric was fighting for its life down there straddling the hole 
and it wasn't really covering it, so you could still see, like, her entire anus <laughs> in the stream. And I was just joking about that, because this has been a huge thing on Twitch for a long time, to constantly be pushing the envelope of what kind of sexual content they'll allow. And it seemed like that had the green light, because she'd been streaming for, like, five-something hours, one of the biggest streamers at the time. She had, like, Valorant gameplay in the tiniest box ever. Like, if you were trying to watch the Valorant gameplay, you would have needed binoculars in order to see it from her stream. And I was just laughing and goofing about that whole situation, because again, it doesn't seem like Twitch really gives a fuck all that much when it comes to these policies. Though she did eventually catch a ban for it, I take no responsibility, that is not my fault. That my yeah, I don't think it's his fault that she got banned. Is this going to be about anything else? Okay. And with a little rusties... I, I'm going to have a take here that I don't think this is smart on her end, right? The people that are tuning into her stream just want to see her ass. And instead of seeing her ass, they see a green screen of Fortnite with her thighs around it. Like, they, you could still kind of see her butt. But I think the people that are tuning into the stream are not wanting to see the gameplay on the butt, right? I just don't think this is... I, I think she's going to lose lose viewership in that realm. Yo, play Maybe Fortnite. I'm wrong. Yes, indeed. And the same amount of luck. Dude, the Fortnite gameplay is in like 140p, too. No way that is the fucking sub alert. Me. Ciao. Yeah, thanks for the sub. Fucking throwing, throwing that shit around. There was an invisible force field. What is this? I already have that. It's a long clip of the gameplay. Ciao. What does she keep saying? Keeps saying ka-chow. ka, -chow. ka -chow for what? I am in no position to be famous. In a fascinating twist of fate, this happens to be like the least nude sexual meta yeah i was gonna say that's like not like that's not that much nudity i've seen develop on twitch you could probably get away with that with old twitch tos like she's fully covered her tukus is just a green screen for gameplay so you can't even really see her rump or anything and she's also wearing like a actual top too so this is like the least sexual i've seen one of these metas get of course watching fortnite gameplay in keister shape isn't conducive to the best viewing experience like it's definitely not optimal for high quality gameplay presentation but there is gameplay there and significantly less nudity it seems though i will say like one of those donation goals at the top there was creamy treat <laughs> yeah that's what i said in the fucking name <laughs> what does that even mean probably like whipped cream dude she probably like puts whipped cream on her or some shit I don't exactly know what that would look like here. I haven't seen or a ice cream clip of it, so I don't really know what it's referring to. Since the focal point of this stream is on her ass gameplay, is she going to, like, shit herself or something? <laughs> like, you donate for the creamy treat and she poops? <laughs> and then, like, the green... Nah, she probably goes and gets fucking ice cream, dude, honestly. Green pants, like, inflate a little bit? I don't know. I, I can't really figure out what that means. It's probably some kind of, like bait and switch type thing creamy treat you donate and then she like, eats a piece of food suggestively perhaps maybe I, I don't know that's what i would assume that's what it would be chess for the five all right but i want to continue now we already watched we already saw we already watched a bunch of that shit now let's fucking move on here uh we might have to skip the america's got talent video today yeah We'll save the America's Got Talent video for like a late night or another day because it's fucking 32 minutes long. Chat with right, one me. more time. I'll, I love Scott Kramer. I know. But I'm saying if we do that, if we do that today, we're not going to. Okay, how about this? 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 Would you guys rather watch the America's Got Talent video today or the Papa Meat Russia's Most Haunting Mystery today? Because we're going to watch this one no matter what. Because this is the shorter one. One of these we'll save for like the next react day or another day can we do a poll on that mods real quick i gotta go fucking piss so i'll place uh a music for you guys real quick
Coming down 30 seconds, mods do a little poll on that. Ugh. All right. Most people voted Papa Meat for today. All right, we'll save the America's Got Talent for tomorrow. Or not tomorrow. Um, A little bit, because the, it the next fucking React day. It's just a longer... I'm still going to watch it one day, because I, it does seem interesting, and I like uh, Scott Kramer's videos, but... um. If I watch that video, that'll be a fucking hour and a half in itself, just because it's a half hour. Uh, so we'll get through these two, because this is like fucking uh, 30 minutes cumulatively. Monty for the sub. We'll be live for another hour-ish, maybe a bit longer, but I mean, I wouldn't be able to get through all three. It would take like another fucking two hours. Only one more video? No, we have two more. We have uh, Why Modern Movies Suck, The Curse of the Multiverse, and then Russia's Most Haunting Mystery, Papa Meat video. All right, now we're locking in for this. Why Modern Movies Suck. Lock the fuck in. Riddle me this, dear viewer. When you're a movie studio that's flush with cash but short on imagination and creativity, and you want to keep exploiting an old franchise with a proven track record, but you've written yourself into a corner with poor storytelling decisions and left your franchise feeling stale and played out, or you've killed off characters that you wish you hadn't, or maybe the actors are getting too old and too expensive, what would you do? Uh, they either A... If you're Marvel, obviously, make a multiverse. Or B, if you're a horror movie series, like Saw, or Paranormal Activity, or... Not Paranormal Activity. What am I talking... What am I thinking of? Uh, or Scream, or Michael Myers, or any of those fucking ones. If you're, if you're any horror movie series, you start making prequels and random movies that don't follow a timeline. Uh, and if you're Marvel, you just say, Hey! There's a million universes. Now we could just infinitely make fucking different fucking... I'm thinking of Insidious. If you're Insidious, you could also fucking do prequels. That's all they do, right? When movies run out of ideas, but they still want to just fucking milk the shit out of that money, they just want to keep making fucking bread, they either A, make a multiverse if it's superheroes, or B, just start cranking out prequels where they can bring back people that died that are popular movie tropes like... uh. In Saw, they bring back the the white guy that's, like, the original Saw, like, five fucking times. Or if you're Insidious, you bring back, like, the woman or some shit like that. They'll bring they'll bring back people. And then they'll say, hey, we're going to keep making these fucking videos. We're, oh, another movie. Oh, they're back. But, yeah, you know, we, we know they died, but this is ten years before. But it's the seventh movie. Like, why are we making a fucking prequel as the seventh film in the series? If your answer is to hire talented writers to dig you out of the hole that you've made for yourself in a way that's logically consistent and emotionally satisfying, or create new and interesting characters to replace the ones that are aging out, or even take a chance on a whole new IP that might be risky at first but offers up greater creative freedom and rewards in the long term, then clearly you're not thinking like a modern Hollywood executive. No, instead what you do- I think Marvel knows they, they kind of shot themselves in the foot here though. Do you, like, would you guys, would you guys say that Marvel movies are as entertaining as they used to be? No. I think Guardians of the Galaxy, I think they're really banking on Deadpool 2 here. I think they are fucking praying to the gods that Deadpool 2 fucking brings them out of the trenches. Because there's a few films 
Like, there's a few movie, movie fucking, um, series in Marvel that still pull views. Spider-Man, Deadpool, Guardians of the Galaxy, which they just did three. Somebody said three? Why are people saying three? Oh, it's Deadpool three. That's what I'm saying. Deadpool three, not Deadpool two. Um... Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't know if they would ever make another one of those. I, I watched the last one, but I forget what the fuck happened at the end of the movie. So, But Guardians of the Galaxy is still popular. Deadpool 2, Deadpool 3, Deadpool in general. Venom, kind of popular. Um, Doctor Strange, I liked Multiverse of Madness. Even though it does fall into the bullshit multiverse shit, I'm like a Doctor Strange deck rider. So I think that was a good movie. Uh, Suicide Squad. Su isn't Suicide Squad not... Suicide Squad's DC, right? If you want to go into DC films, they have the same fucking problem. Like, um, they, 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 it's just repetitive, right? I think it's just superhero movies in general. Like, at the end of the day, how many fucking new, how many new scary things do we have to beat? Well, you beat Thanos, right? You beat Thanos. You beat the guy that literally eliminated half of every living thing in the entire universe. What the fuck are you going to beat now? Another evil guy that can fucking warp time? Oh, like, it can't get more interesting. Do is fall back on one of the laziest and contrived stories. It's like the Godzilla movies? Well, the Godzilla movies just perform amazing with foreign audiences. Same thing with Fast and Furious. Like, those scene, like those movies, Fast and Furious specifically... They're only still making them because of how much pull they have in Asia and uh, other fucking uh, parts of the world. Just because in the U.S., Fast, like if, if Fast and Furious was only popular with the American audience, it would fucking already have died at the seventh movie. I chat when have you guys seen the what was the last Fast and Furious movie you saw? I have not seen them past seven. I knows what I know what happens in eight, nine, and ten because I fucking watched like a synopsis of the films. But, like, I'm not going to sit down and fucking lock in for a three-hour movie that's just going to be the same as the fucking last ones with, like, stunts that are so absurd that it's, like, not even... It's not even to the point where it's, like, John Wick where, like, he lives but it's kind of still crazy because it's entertaining. It's, like, you just fucking got blown up, your car blew up, and you somehow walked out of that unscathed. That's not entertaining. Telling tropes since the rise of the unstoppable, infallible girl boss. I'm talking, of course, about multiverses. <laughs> if ever you needed an example of something that sounds good on paper but becomes a complete disaster the more it's actually used, then multiverses are the thing for you. And that's not to say that it's an objectively bad idea by itself. In fact, what I hope you know, to- No, well, a standalone multiverse movie like, um... Oh my god, I always fucking blank on this movie name. I talk about it all the time. Don't say it, chat. Oh my god, and they fucking time warp, and they have different lives, and there's the donut hole, and all this other shit. Oh, one of the best movies I've ever seen. Oh my god, and I never remember the name of it, and I've fucking seen it twice now. Oh, fuck. Everything everywhere all at once. I had luck. I had a luck. I always think Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World because it's a fucking book that I read in high school. And I don't know why I always fucking go to that. To show with this video is that when it's properly implemented, it can actually be a very Like, you're ever trying to think of something and there's like one thing that you know it's not, but it's the forefront in your mind. And just because you thought of that, now you're physically incapable of thinking of what you're trying to think of. That is what I experience every fucking day. Effective storytelling device. No, the problems creep in when it's put into the hands of lazy hack writers who either can't or won't work within the rules of the established universe, or lack the imagination to move the story forward and instead devolve into the cinematic equivalent of a hyperactive toddler banging different toys together. Now, I say multiverses because let's be honest, it's a pretty good catch-all term for what's actually a much broader and more diverse problem in the industry, and in reality it covers pretty much everything from alternate realities to branching timelines and lazy half explained retcons of past events. Each method is slightly different, but it all adds up to the same basic problem, and that's what I'm keen to tackle here today. So buckle up as we- Well, it's, it's plot flaws, but it's also just, they're just trying to give themselves more content to work with. Like, after Infinity War and Endgame, Marvel knew it was like, hey man, like I know we have a bunch of comics and shit we could write off with like single person stories, but how are we going to keep making films? 
for the next 20 fucking years. And for them to do that, they need to create a world where they could just keep bringing in new characters from other universes. Because if they bring them from the universe they're in, everybody's going to say, why weren't they there when Thanos came in? Right? Why weren't they there doing this? Why weren't they there doing that? We embark on another adventure into why modern movies suck. Somebody said this video's mid, not gonna lie. We'll see you in 10 minutes, buddy. I timed you out. You could uh, tune back in when the video's over. Fuck. First up, let us try to understand the reason for using multiverses in a story, because there has to be some kind of motivation for doing them, right? Well, if I had to sum it up with two simple words, then they would probably- Not an L chatter, but I'm gonna time him out if they're complaining. You're allowed to say, oh, I kinda wanna switch videos, but you're like, nah, mid, not gonna lie. Will be, what if? See, one of the great aspects of storytelling is speculating on the road not taken and what effect it might have had on your favourite story and characters. Like, what if Darth Vader offered Luke the chance to join him in Empire and Luke said, You son of a bitch, I'm in! Or what if Saruman managed to steal the One Ring for himself? Or Obi-Wan Kenobi died instead of Qui-Gon Jinn? Or Khan defeated Kirk and went on to build a new civilization for himself? Or General Bison was finally able to build Bisonopolis with a an even bigger food courts. All of these things are pretty interesting to speculate on because they allow us to indulge our own imagination and creativity to think about what we might have done if we were in charge of telling the story. Hollywood studios understand that same desire, and just like anything else where there's a latent demand for something, sooner or later they'll find a way to exploit it for money. And re Yeah, but they, they've never really gone into that. Like, has Marvel ever gone into the what if? Like, they go into the multiverse shit, but they end up just saying, oh yeah, Here's America Chavez, who for some reason wears patriotic United States memorabilia and is from a universe where the United States doesn't exist, and their name's also America, and then they came to America in the United States, and they're a superhero, but that's about all we get. It's not even a what if. It's not like what if... Thanos, like, they do the what if if Thanos lost, or what if if Thanos won. Like, that's, like, about it. The show, there's a whole show called What If. Oh, is there dead ass? I don't watch Marvel shows. You know, you could diss me here. You could say L. Joe Bart, you know? But I don't watch Marvel shows. I think the idea of having a superhero show is kind of fucking stupid. Marvel What If. What do they get into the what ifs of? What if Captain Carter was the first Avenger? What if T'Challa became a Star-Lord? What if the world lost its mightiest heroes? I feel like these are boring what-ifs. What if Ultron 1 is a cool one? What if there was an what if Thor was an only child? Who gives a fuck? You should watch it though, it's very good. Is it good though, chat? Do you guys like it? I didn't even know this was a fucking thing. I'm so serious. Oh, this is fairly new. 2021-2023. Well, I mean, that's not new. That's almost fucking... <laughs> that's three years ago. That's not new. Wow, how did I not know about this? This was three years ago. And I, I feel like somebody probably mentioned it, but you know when you're having a conversation with somebody and you're, like, zoned out? Wow. I did not know... This was three years ago, and I did not know about this. It's because I'm not into Marvel shows. Like the Loki series or She-Hulk or whatever. Gerber for the sun. Really, multiverses are the quickest and easiest- You should watch Loki, that was very good. ...easiest way of doing it. Wish that Tony Stark had survived his final battle with Thanos? Don't worry, we can just hop into a different dimension and there he is, alive and well. Wish that Finn had become the last Jedi instead of Rey? Well, it happened an infinite number of times in other realities, and all it takes is a jump into a space- I'm kinda happy they killed off Iron Man. Gonna have a take here. Gonna have a take here. Gonna be an upsetting one for some of you guys. I think it was a good choice that they killed off Iron Man. Because that motherfucker was in too many movies. He was the central point of way too many movies. It was kind of getting boring. Because it was like, ah, it's Iron Man. Ah, Iron Man again. Ah, oh, it's Iron Man. He's really smart. And he has a cool suit. And he makes cool gadgets. It's Iron Man. He's cool, and he makes cool things. I mean, he passed that torch to fucking Peter Parker, basically, like Spider-Man, but I think that was a good choice. And the Hulk's better than Iron Man because he didn't die when he put on the glove. Which 
wheel or a bit of dick in a... Ah, you know, I don't even like Hulk that much. But you know who didn't die when they put on the glove? The Hulk. Round in the world between worlds to see it happen. Wish that Kyle Reese was still alive after Terminator 1. Nothing a bit of time travel can't fix. Pretty much anything is possible because you're no longer bound by the rules of the existing universe or even what happened in it up until that point. It's like- Hulk's a mutated human. Yeah, and Iron Man's a fucking super genius that could have made him a little bit stronger to withstand the force of the, the, you know, the, the fucking glove. I don't know. Maybe he could have- could have thought that one out. Maybe, hey, if I'm Iron Man, Iron Man's that smart. Maybe think of uh, something that he could put on the glove and not die. Literally a dream come true for- That's not how it works? Well, why does it not work that way? Any writer brought into- You are a dumbass. Bro, we're talking about a hypothetical movie series. We are talking about a hypothetical movie series. We are- You are treating this like this is physics. Like this is fucking- Like, like gravity and Isaac Newton's laws of the fucking universe, dude. We are talking about Marvel, right? A Marvel movie. That's not how it works, you fucking idiot. To a long he is human, Hulk is superhuman. Fair, but I'm also just thinking, like, Iron Man, why couldn't he make something that would enable him to withstand the power of the glove? Does it, is it, like, rooted in your heart, like the Grinch? And it's like, uh, it, it disregards technological capabilities. It's more so, hey, you have to be able to hold, you have to be able to hold it in your inner person, right? It would ruin the movie series. Yeah, so they fucking killed him. Running franchise with a ton of lore and- Because it was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to kill Iron Man in that scenario. Backstory- I agree with Marvel on that. It was a W choice, right? Tedious rules to remember, because it allows them to- to basically ignore all of it and do whatever the fuck they feel like. Yeah, so Darth Vader can shoot bolts of force lightning out of his arse now, and I don't care that he's dead and that's impossible because this is a different reality, you see? Hurry up and bring me another line. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's the shit. The avenues for exploring new paths and possibilities. If Hulk died, it wouldn't have had the same impact because nobody gives a fucking rat's ass about the fucking Hulk. Because nobody cares about the fucking Hulk, if you want me to be real. Because the Hulk isn't that cool of a fucking superhero. He's the fucking Hulk. All he does is go, Rah! and then fucking pounds shit. It's not that interesting. It's just a big guy. It's a big dude, and he's green, right? And he used to not be able to control his anger. And that was the fun part of it, right? That was what made Hulk cool, right? The, the, outside of he's just a roid rage fucking strong guy, it was, hey, when he gets really mad, now he can't control himself. And that was fun. But now Hulk's just Hulk. And now he can be mad whenever he wants. Now he's just now he's just a big guy. Now he's a big guy and he's green. That's the Hulk. That's wow, how fucking cool is that? You know who is a cool superhero? Uh Venom. Deadpool. Doctor Strange. That's fucking sick. You know who else is even better? Michael Morbius. Morbius is a cooler hero on paper than the Hulk. Now. The Hulk now. Not the Hulk when he couldn't control himself. Hulk now versus Morbius then. Is, 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 Morbius is a cooler hero. Stop saying Jiggle Machine. Bro. I'm, I, I feel like I'm right. It's Morbin time. Yeah, that's sick, too, to say that. It's Morbin time. Do you think they're going to make a second Morbius? I hope they do. I hope they do. I'll watch it. Right, and you know what's really funny about Morbius? He's the hero, but he killed more innocent people than the villain. And that, and that really makes you think, right? <laughs> Michael Morbius is the hero, but he murdered an entire fucking ship of people as well as just innocent civilians. But it's like... You know, it's whatever, because the other guy's angry and has bad intentions. Big Souse for the five gifted. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Shelby for the three. Is Venom really a hero or is he an anti-hero? Him and Deadpool are anti-heroes, but anti-heroes are still in the category of a hero to me because they're not doing anything wrong. They're like, they're like villainous, but they're only villainous against other villains. The Uncooked Ginger for the three. What do you think about the most recent Godzilla movie? I haven't seen, like, any of the Godzilla movies. I've probably seen, like, two, and there's probably, like, 30. 
Pete for the three. What's your opinion on soccer? Pretty cool. I used to play it. Ozzy for the three. You should want Loki. It's really good. Need and Gerber for the sub show. for the three. Do you watch Marvel movies just for entertainment or the actual lore and the timelines told in the movies? Both. But I'm not as into the timelines. I'm just more into the movies. But I also like the lore. Jabobo and Monty for the sub. Uh, I know for the sub. Abilities are quite literally unlimited, but so are the problems that they create. And this is the heart of the issue here. See, the only reason we as the... Per chance for the five gifted subs. Thank you for the five gifted. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the five gifted. Audience ever get invested in a story, any story really, is because of stakes. If a character gets killed halfway through the story, then just like in real life, they're gone forever. It doesn't matter how much you like them or how badly you want them to pull through, they're dead and they're not coming back. If they're a well-written character that the audience empathizes with, then it creates a genuine sense of loss and grief, almost like you've lost a real friend. Oh, I like New Groot too. New Groot's pretty chill. Old Groot sucked. Old, old Groot sucked. Guardians of the Galaxy 1 Groot was ass. Yabo, why are you fucking spamming? Yabo, Yabo, why are you spamming? What is parasocial? You're spelling it wrong. And why are you asking that right now? Why are you asking that right now? And why are you spamming? You're a VIP. Parasocial? Like, what is, like, what do you mean? Like, what is, pa like, just what is parasocial in general? Like, thinking you know somebody that doesn't know you, right? It's usually with people that have either clout or fame to a degree. The easiest example is, like, K-pop artists, right? Like, people perceiving that they'd have a relationship chance with the person that they don't even know because they know them, but, and they think that the other person knows them because they know them, but in reality, the famous person doesn't know them because they've never even met them. They don't know even their name, but since they know everything about the other person, it seems like they have some sort of relationship, parasocial relationship. Boom. Done. It's why you can't interact with fucking audience members or fans and stuff like that. As you get bigger and have a, uh, a larger audience, you have to stop interacting with fans because they get parasocial. Agent for the sub. That right there is the power of storytelling when it's done right. And the more the writers raise the possibility that even the most popular- He said sorry? I'm not mad at him, but it's just like- when I have a lot of VIPs that just randomly spam, and it's like, dude, like- I know you're a VIP, I know you you're, you void chat restrictions, but that doesn't mean you can just sit there and, like, spam in my chat, you know? But you're good. I'm not mad at you, Yabo. ...characters can die and be lost forever, the more they raise those all-important dramatic stakes because something that you care about is now in danger. But what happens when you introduce multiverses into the equation? Well, quite simply, you remove any sense of stakes. Suddenly, death becomes less of a permanent tragic loss and more of a temporary inconvenience, a bit like restarting a level on a video game. Yeah, it's fucking annoying, man. Like, they just gotta keep- like, especially when they brought back Gamora. In, uh, for those of you that don't know, the green girl from, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, I know it's the different multiverse Gamora, but it's like, uh, when she was in the new movie, it was like, she's there, and it's like, oh, the tension of like, oh, she's not the same Gamora as the Gamora he loved. And that was like, okay, but it's just like, oh, fuck. Like, if somebody's dead, don't bring them back as a different version of themselves. Game. Who cares that Character X heroically sacrificed their life to save their friends because in an infinite number yeah, of- Yeah, and you're just waiting for them to come back rather than knowing that they're dead. I think they- I don't think they'll ever bring back Iron Man from a different universe. But I, I think that's like a concrete death. If they ever brought back Iron Man, it'd be fucking over. Did they ever bring back Iron Man in, like, a different series or something? I'm trying to, th I, like, I'm trying to think. No, right? Corrupted for the three. Marvel Studios is forced by former CEO of Disney to push out all the shows and movies that sucked during COVID, meaning that shit sucked. She was late. It was lazy writing because of that. Phase 4 would be great with the multiverse. If that didn't happen, Sony is not the same as Marvel Studios, and that's not uh, a different Gamora. That's just Gamora from 2014. She's the same person. Alex for the sub. How is she the same person? They didn't go back in time. They got her from a different universe. Right? Or no? It was time? Oh my god, it was when they went back in time. With, uh, what's his fucking name? Oh my god, what is his name? He's like a shitty hero. Is it Ant-Man? Yeah, Ant-Man. Of other realities, he's completely fucked. Or Hawkeye. No, it's not Hawkeye. I thought it was Ant-Man. Somebody said such an idiot. Dude, why are you getting so fucking mad? 
Worst take ever, horrible take ever, TikTok Marvel knowledge. TikTok Marvel knowledge. How to be an idiot 101. They're infinite they're infinity stones. What do you want them to do, idiot? Oh my god, dude. Fucking I don't get I don't get my Marvel knowledge from TikTok. You think for fun I go on TikTok and watch stupid fucking content creators talk about fucking Marvel movies? No. If I was going to fucking read about Marvel movies, I'd go on this guy's fucking channel because he knows a lot of shit. I'm not going to go on some jackass that makes 15 second videos about fucking It's Morbin time, right? I'm going to go on this fucking guy's channel. What's his fucking name? The Critical Drinker because it looks like he knows a lot about fucking movies. Why the hell would I get my knowledge on movies from fucking Morbin time TikTokers? Fine. Shit, man. If we really want to, we can even grab one. You roasted me and it pissed me. It pissed. Pissed. Fuck. Pissed me off. One of those other versions and pull them into our own reality as a convenient replacement. I mean, we wouldn't want the audience to feel bad or anything. Which really is the narrative equivalent of having your cake and eating it. On a personal level, individual stakes no longer exist because characters no longer exist as single unique entities that actually matter. Instead, each one is just an insignificant variation of an infinitely larger whole, with endless variety and complexity that can never truly die or succeed at anything, and so there's literally no reason to get invested in their struggle because there's infinite variations of it out there. It's the same problem when it comes to time travel, which is another bullshit method of undoing past events and rewriting your own story to suit your current needs. Like, how many times has the Terminator franchise been ripped up, rebuilt and rewritten, constantly changing and contradicting its own rules in the process? Everything we saw in the future was predetermined and trying to change it actually causes it to happen in the first place. Actually, no, forget that. We just changed the future to make it better now. Nah, actually, the future was always going to happen this way. You only managed to delay it. We sort of agree with that idea, but here's a bunch of additional tacked on shit that you never wanted or needed. Nope, in fact, now we've gone back and messed with the I've never even seen any of the Terminator movies. Is that guy naked? Asked as well because we're fucking idiots. Wait, hold my beer. Ignore what everyone else said because we've got an even worse storyline in to replace it. At a certain point, it becomes a complete- I gotta click off. I gotta click off. I gotta click off. I said all I want. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Oh, that's really big. And big equals good, right? Wrong. This is the word emphasis. Best describe as antagonist dilution. Like, remember Agent Smith from The Matrix? Remember how he was this really sinister, intimidating antagonist because he was intelligent and ruthless and physically powerful and basically unkillable? And it took Neo literally dying to discover the power needed to defeat him? He was a pretty good villain. I liked him. Then cast your mind forward to The Matrix Reloaded, where Smith was able to replicate himself to the point where Neo ends up fighting dozens, if not hundreds, of him all at the same time. Remember how much less intimidating yeah, and interesting- Yeah, that was- that was weird. Eh. Alright, we're gonna move on. That is a good YouTube video, though, but I got out all I wanted to say. I won for the sub. Shoy for the three. Ultron was by far the best Marvel villain out there. Uh, Yabo for the three. Sorry, Joe, not trying to be an annoying chatter. You're not an annoying chatter. I was just telling you not to spam. Alex for the sub. All right, next. Uh, Russia's most haunting mystery, a Papa Meat video. I haven't seen a Papa Meat video in quite a while here. Oh, victory. Victory vibes, huh? Oh, was Dune Part 2 good? I actually heard Dune Part... Oh, are you saying Dune Part 2 was bad? I heard that you, I heard that you didn't like Dune Part 2. I heard that I heard that you you thought Dune Part Two was a bad movie. You know, I I I, I don't know. It's just like I I got that vibe from you, Victory Vibes, that you didn't like Dune Part Two. Do you actually did you think it was good, or did you think it was bad? Which one was it? Russia's most haunting mystery. Back to the Papa Meat channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on down. Today, we're talking about- I'm gonna say this right now. I think Papa Meat is my new favorite YouTuber. Um, of all time. I think it is unmatched, uh, uncontended. Uh, I've begun to watch some of his old YouTube videos, uh, on the Papa Meat channel. I think he is a great commentator, editor. Uh, he's also just fucking entertaining as shit. Shout to him. Out hiking. Well- and he's very visually appealing. I not 
like I don't want to I don't want to be like oh he's an attractive guy but you know like oh. he's a very visually appealing man like I like how you doing come on in and sit on down today he's a recognizable guy you know he looks friendly talking about hiking well you're glazing I don't give a shit I know I'm glazing I'll say the same thing about Kid Cudi music dude when I sit down and I fucking hear sound soundtrack to my life start playing I start fucking shitting myself man Kind of. There's always been some kind of crazy hiking stories, right? The Donner Party being one of them, which resulted in some kind of weird stuff. Or even the guy who, not necessarily hiking, but went out and rode bicycles and, you know, the 127-hour story about getting... Oh, and he cut his arm off? Trapped and having to cut off your arm and drink your piss and all that kind of stuff. So all I'm saying is that hiking is a... Cannibalism, though? Mm. Chat, you're hiking in the wilderness for a month, right? And you've been lost for the fucking last three weeks first week you know you kind of knew where you were going last three weeks you're kind of lost right you're starting to starve to death your friend dies first are you gonna eat him yeah yeah i wouldn't kill him but if he died right like say i was stranded on a boat like some life of pie type shit and they died. Like, I didn't kill them, but they died. And I'm dying of starvation. I think a lot of people that are saying no, I think, I think, your, I think your opinion would change. I think a lot of people are going to say no. And then when you're legitimately starving and you're now just an animal, uh, you're no longer a developed human and you're literally starving, I don't think you're going to resist the the capability to eat that person and potentially survive out of that scenario. Would you go to prison after? No, I don't think so. There's been multiple scenarios. There was a flight of rugby players that uh, crashed in like the Chilean Alps and they ate the people that died to live. Uh, in that scenario, I don't think you're in trouble. Uh, if you killed them and ate them, I think it's different because you murdered someone. But uh, if you were if they were like proven to have already been dead and you ate them to survive, I don't think you would go uh, to prison. It really would depend on who it would be. Like, I think I could eat one of my friends in that. It, okay, now, <laughs> I think if I, I think I could eat one of my friends. I don't think I could eat, like, I don't think I could eat one of my parents or, like, I wouldn't eat Brooke. Like, I would just die. Like, if me and Brooke went hiking and and she died, I would I would just starve to death. I think at that point I would have to hold I th I would I think I would I would just I would just not eat them, you know. Because that would be too that'd be too traumatic. I feel like I'd get even if I got out of that, I'd probably just kill myself, you know. Like I, I afterwards, there's just no point, right? I think if I if, I think if I was with my friend and me and him are are dying and we're starving and he's like closer to dying than me and he's like eat me. He's like, he's like, when I die, you can eat me. I'd say, okay, right? I'd be like, thank you. But if it was like Brooke, I'd be like, I'm not going to eat you, right? Because even if, if you go through with it, then when you get out of that scenario, you're just going to fucking, you're going to, oh my God, the rest of your life, you're going to be like, dude, you ate your, your loved one, right? I think it would matter how close they are to you. If it's somebody I didn't know, I think it'd be much easier. Mr. Mass for the sub, corrupted for the three. Chat, this is all hypothetical. You guys are saying AO and shit. What are you doing in this scenario? You're just going to be like, no, no. No matter who it is, no matter what it is, I wouldn't eat Daisy. I would not eat my dog. I think I'd starve. I think it, uh, I think it would matter. I think it would matter who. Matter who it was. What scenario I'm in, who it was, how, how, how bad of a situation I'm in starving-wise. Like, is there a potential that I would get out of this, maybe, like, find a squirrel like, if, if I'm in the middle of the woods and I know I'm going to die regardless, I'm not going to eat them. But if it's like, hey, I might be two days from making it out of here, and if I eat if I eat this already dead person, I'd get out, I think it'd really matter, right? i just door dash. Oh, yeah, you door dash in the middle of the woods. What part would you eat? Probably the calf. If I, if I, had, to, if I had to eat a person, um, I'd probably cut the calf and then, and then probably, like, get all the hair off, right? And then, like, you would just eat it like a chicken leg. You would go insane. 
I think you're in a survivalist scenario right right then, right then and there. You're saying you would go insane, but there's people that have done this, right? Like there's this story I I don't know what the name of the people are, but they ate they ate their friends to live. Rugby guys who ate their friends. A Uruguayan rugby team crashed in the Andes Mountains and uh, endured freezing temperatures and eventually ate the dead among them to survive until they were saved. Goated, thank you for the raid. Mr. Mass for the sub. Corrupted for the three. Marvel just scrapped projects they don't believe in because they're focusing on quality now that Bob Iger's back as the CEO. Hopefully, oh, glad they brought back X-Men. Hope they bring back Venom uh, and the Spider-Verse a very peculiar thing today hiking is involved in one of russia's craziest and most controversial mysteries which this time in russia it was the cold war era right you would be messed up after oh yeah no fucking shit right after world war ii all the way up until the 90s there was a big period of time where people were talking about secret experiments super weapons all kinds of crazy things that russia was doing and god damn it if the world wasn't absolutely horrified of them which even this cold war era is very it's it's considered the russian area 51 it's perplexed people for over 50 years now and people think that all kinds of crazy supernatural things have happened tb for the three what if the dead person's only fresh flesh was their ass would you eat a dead person's ass is it meaty or fatty like, you would have to provide... Dude, I'm, like, I know you're trying to make a joke right now, and a lot of people are like, oh, hey, yo. I'm thinking of a survivalistic scenario. Like, if I'm about to die, and this person's been dead, and they're not, like, somebody that I would be traumatized... Like, obviously, you're going to be traumatized from eating a human, but I'm saying, like, it's somebody that you don't know personally. Like, it's, like, somebody you've met maybe one time, or it was, like, the person next to you. Like, say you're on a plane... And, like, the only you and one other, one other person survive and you don't know them. And, like, they fucking die. Like, am I going to eat them? If it provides me enough nutritional value to where I'm going to get out of that? Yeah, probably. Happen from aliens to cryptid monsters. I'm anywhere between on the spectrum of conspiracies. The, the Cold War Russia era, it, it falls pretty much right in the middle of that. We're going to be talking about nine students from a nearby Polytechnic Institute who went missing during a skiing trip. They were found later with missing clothes and unusual damage done to their bodies, even though the campsite looked largely undisturbed. To this day, no one knows what happened, and some people think that we will never find out. And this- I've heard briefly about this mystery before, but it, it's like one of the most fascinating fucking stories. Has become the incident known as the Dyatlov Pass. And I'm going to let you know right now, I'm going to mispronounce a lot of Russian stuff. I can barely speak English, and it's my first language, so if I mispronounce a name, just roll with me. We'll have the names up on the screen, and you can justify it later. The Dyatlov Pass, this incident, no one really knows what happens, right? And I don't think that we'll ever truly know what happens. But I'd like to talk about some of the conspiracy theories today because this story is extremely interesting. It's full of so many questions and not enough answers to where- I just can't imagine, like, I don't, I, I, just as a baby, Imagine being lost in the woods so far in to the point that, like, you can't, if you don't know where you're going, you won't get out. Not like, hey, you're in your friend's backyard and you got a little turned around and if you walk in one direction for two miles, you'll be out. I'm saying, like, imagine you're in, like, the middle of the fucking wilderness. No cell phone connection. You're fucking nowhere near at your group. You're, you're, or even to say you're with your group, you're just fucking gone. You're lost. It's like you and four of your friends, and you're like, where the fuck do we go, right? And it's hundreds of miles of land to the point where you're not going to fucking make it out. You're either surviving and living off the wilderness or fucking dying, right? Like, you would have to be able to survive for, you would have to have such good survivalistic knowledge, not like you're a hiker or like a scout, like, you would have to be so in tune with nature that you would be able to fucking live for weeks to be able to get out of that. If you're to the point where you're so lost that you have to hike hundreds of miles to get out of there. Uh, Crooks and it's cycling for the sub. No, for the sub. Well, misfits for the three. Speaking about that crash, if you look at the picture of where they found it, they were just sitting by a rib cage. Yeah. I think that's where it lets people run wild with their imaginations. I wanted to tell you so maybe you could come up with your own answers as well. The year is 1958 in Soviet Russia. 
I don't know how I feel about that. I'm trying to make if you lived where I lived, it would be so easy. I'm surrounded by animals and farms. That's why I gave you a hypothetical that wasn't you're in civilization, dude. I'm saying imagine you're in like the Amazon rainforest or like some part of the Appalachian Trail that's in the middle of fucking nowhere. Right? Like, imagine you're in, like, the wilderness in fucking uh, some north of, like, in Canada. You're in the Canadian wilderness. Fucking hundreds of miles away from land. Make it sound like a Disney thing where it's like, it's 1985 and you're in Los Angeles, California. But no, the year is 1958 and you're in Soviet Russia, which I imagine is cold and people are eating potatoes and drinking vodka. Igor Dyatlov, for whom the incident is named after, is studying radio engineering at Ural Polytechnic Institute in Yekaterinburg, Russia. Like I said, stay with me. I, I swear, just it's up on the screen. If it gets too out of hand, if it's we'll you and Brooke in that area, are you surviving? Oh fuck now, dude. I would know how to maybe make a fire, and that'd be it. Like I don't think I'd be able to hunt or make weapons, like at least outside of a spear. Twice for the three. Been watching your streams. You got me through rough times when I was struggling with people making fun of me being underweight due to my eating habits. I'm sorry you've been going through that. I recovered from that. Just turned 15 on Friday. Doing so much better. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm glad I could help, um, like, get you through those times. But at the end of the day, I'm still sorry that you had to go through that. But I'm glad that you're, you know, you're doing better. Uh, fucking W chatter. Twice for the five. Just say gibberish. One of the leading technical universities in the country, UPI turned out top flight engineers to work in nuclear power and weapons industry, communications, and military engineering. Young Igor, who was 23 at the time, was an inventor, a tinkerer, and an outdoor enthusiast that had an idea. He proposed and planned a 16-day cross-country skiing expedition through the Ural Mountains. This divides Western Russia and Siberia. Siberian wilderness? How many times has someone said that when they're like... Oh my god, this is the last dumb chat I'm reading and then I'm fucking watching the video. How long could you eat yourself before dying? That's not possible. If you eat yourself, you're not... Yes, you could eat yourself for calories, but the amount of expenditure that you're going to have to heal yourself from cutting off parts of your limbs is going to outdo the amount of food that you're then receiving, right? Like, if I cut off my leg, the amount of... Like, say I cut me down. That food is not going to give me enough sustenance to not only heal me, but outgrow the expenditure of calories and energy that I need to help myself, right? It, to the point where I'm not going to die. Like, eating yourself is not a means of not starving. Donatello for the sub. It's only going to make it worse. Don't, don't for that. Or even what it makes you think of, too, Serbian film. Good movie. Which means this mountain range separates Europe from Asia. It's, it's a big deal. It's a big, it's a big mountain range, all right? I'm just trying to let you know it's, it is the literal line in the sand. This was not the first big wilderness trip that Dyatlov had conducted, and he often used equipments he had invented or improved on during these excursions. But for this trip, the skiers had to ski over 200 miles on a route no Russian had ever taken before, as far as everyone knows. You know, people could have done it, but they might have died or had something similar happen to them that was never documented, but I digress. Dyatlov designed the trip to be as hard as possible. So you know the group what's wild is on top of Mount Everest, there's just frozen bodies. And, like, dead people and shit. Like, in the middle of, like, those, uh, all the way up top near, like, those mountains and shit, there's just fucking dead people. And, like, you might just pass one. I mean, they'll probably, they might move them out of the way and shit, but, like, at the end of the day, like, you'll see, you might see a dead person. They're just frozen. Mariella for the three. If you and Brooke were stranded in a zombie apocalypse, who do you think would last longer? Are we working together, or are we in our own different scenarios? I think I would outlive Brooke. I also think that's just because I watch zombie shows. I've thought about it. I think I've thought about I think I've pondered on what I would do in a zombie scenario more than Brooke has. I, I think I think there's been there's been hours of my life that I've dedicated to thinking, hey, if a zombie apocalypse broke out, where would I go? What would I do? Right? I don't know why. I think that's like a needed thing that I've that I've thought about, but I've thought about it. Could all get certified as grade three outdoor. What would you do? Why would I tell you? <laughs> why would I? Why would I tell you? Because now now other people are gonna do what I'm gonna do. And then, and then you're going to have a, an upper hand on me, right? Or then uh, maybe I'm not going to have as many resources as I thought I would once have. Please tell you. No, I'm not going to tell you. You got to figure that shit out your fucking self. Zombie apocalypse breaks out. You're fucking on your, you're on your own, buddy.
you'd live on top of a Walmart. I've thought about that. I, I think that's I think that's too thought of, right? I think that's too thought of. I think that's a bad play. I think living on top of a Walmart isn't going to work because I think the first thing that people are going to do is go to a Walmart, right? And that's where a lot of people are going to die. Uh, and then they're going to become zombies. So you want to go somewhere that's kind of in the middle of nowhere, right? Obviously, set up camp. I think ideally, the end game in a zombie apocalypse is you get to an island, right? Uh, obviously. I think living on a, a self-sustaining island would just be the best scenario. Um, where that would be, I don't know. Hawaii? No. I'm talking a small island. Like an island that could hold like a thousand people. Like Alcatraz. Like if I, if I lived in California, I would be living in Alcatraz. I would be living on Alcatraz. Uh, 100%. I would be, because it, it's got, it's got a structure that you could maintain. You could probably start some, some sort of technological things there. Um, and you're kind of surrounded by sharks. So I don't think anything would get near you. Hypothetically, if the zombies could swim, right? Little misfits for the three. What if it's like World War Z zombies? What are you doing? Oh, the ones that run. I think we're, I think we're all dead. Walking Dead Zombies, I think you could survive that apocalypse fairly easily. I think that World War Z is more realistic on how scary that would be. If you've never seen World War Z, they full fucking sprint. They, World War Z Zombies, they run, like, as fast as... And they can tower up, um... Like, they run and they can, like, they're like a hive mind. They can, like, crawl up walls and shit. It's fucking horrifying. And then they run at people and fucking kill them and shit. I don't know if it shows anybody dying here. It doesn't. Last of Us Zombies? Oh, the clickers? Oh, fuck. No, that would be also scary. I, I, ideally, a zombie apocalypse is, is Walking Dead Zombies. I think Walking Dead Zombies, it's like fucking, I think they, I think they make it too hard. I think Walking Dead Zombie Apocalypse, I think you could fucking kill all of them. And it would not even be that big of a, a problem. Like, it, it, Walking Dead Zombies get a really long fucking spear and have, like, fucking 30 people in, like, a Spartan formation with shields. And you could just clear thousands of them a day. And then, eventually, there would just be no more zombies. And, like, yeah, when people die, they become zombies, but you just fucking kill them. You just set up a situation where if somebody dies, you fucking kill them. Horseman, which is the highest level of some kind of Boy Scout ranking for Russian people that I don't know. And if you want to put a little blurb here, you can. I gotta, I gotta fuck. Now we gotta rewind. I don't even know what we're doing right now. All get certified as Grade 3 Outdoorsman, which okay. is the highest level of some kind of Boy Scout ranking for Russian people that I don't know. And if you want to put a little blurb here, you can. But basically, it's... Participate in outdoor educational programs, learn and practice fundamental outdoor skills, develop leadership abilities, seek mentorship. Wow. Tough. And you get a big badge. You can feel like a man. Today's video is sponsored by... Oh, I'm sorry, Papa Meat. I'm sorry. ...for sponsoring this video and back to the video. Dyatlov recruited his classmates Zina, Kamagolovla, and seven other students who were close friends or acquaintances with Dyatlov. They were all experienced winter campers and cross-country skiers. One of them even, Georgi Kanjimovskinsko, was an engineer at Mayak Nuclear Complex in the secret town of Chiachibit 40. <laughs> I gave up way too quickly, that's alright. It was a birthplace of the Soviet nuclear weapons program after the Second World War, and this place at the time was completely hidden and not visible on map. The identities of the 100,000 people living there were erased from the census. This happened for decades. So what's kind of interesting so far is we're getting into a spot where all of these people are very smart engineers. I mean, even Dyatlov, Igor, an inventor, a tinkerer, all of his friends go to this school with nuclear power programs. And it's just, it's building a theme. These people know too much and they're traveling in a certain area. What a delicious setup, isn't it? It's so weird, like, well, we're all just nuclear physicists who work with nuclear-grade weapons and arms. You guys want to go skiing, or what's going on with that? A few days before the group took off, however... The... And that's why everybody thinks it's like something killed them, because they're such a smart... It's not like pulling five of us, right? Like, out of the 4,000 people here, it's not like pulling five of us and just going, all right, go survive in the woods. Like, they have survivalist knowledge, and they're just really smart people. 
UPI administration added a mystery like man. How would they just die? To the expedition. Semyon. Stop pronouncing nuclear wrong. Are you talking to Papa Meat? Zola Troyov. No one knew. Why? He was a veteran of the Second World War with a curly mustache and odd tattoos. And at 37, he was also much older than the rest of the people going. The average being... Wow, in everybody was like in their 20s? Group around 22 years old. You know, like college people. I'll tell you what, dude, Simon. Even in this picture, he looks <laughs> mysterious. If this was a guess who map of who farted, he would definitely be the person where he's just like... Oh, <laughs> me, I don't... I could have been me, I don't know. I'll tell you what, though, Yuri, he's got some ears on him. God damn. Igor yeah, looks like a frog. With all this out of the way. Yo, Yuri looks like the kid from Polar Express that has no friends. And he sings in the back of the 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 fucking train and he's like, Hi, hi, Christmas or some shit. He likes some stupid fucking song and they try to befriend him. He's got some ears on him. God damn. Igor looks like a frog. With all this out of the way, the trip finally sets forth. The trip officially took off on January 23rd, 1959. And up until the point of the disappearance, the trip was very well documented. The group kept a communal journal, and most of the people going kept individual journals as well. And at least wow. five of the hikers had cameras on them, and most of their pictures depicted a group of young people, beautiful and energetic. Hey, this is definitely something that horror films are made out of. Like, this is the part in the movie where there's like everybody- They should make a horror film with this, but they wouldn't know how to end it. Because nobody knows how they died. He's all laughing, and then we're all relatable. Dude, are you going to ask her out this weekend? He's like, shut up, Igor. Maybe I will. Fuck off, Yuri. Maybe I fucking will ask Simon Yagabakov off. Three days in, a man named Yuri Yudin was experiencing- Yo, that looks like JC, bro. Holy fuck. Off. Three days in. Yo, deadass. Remove- Hold up. That, like, low-key looks like it could be Jinxie. Like, the eyes? No, it doesn't. To me, it does. A man named Yuri Yudin was experiencing severe sciatica and had to abandon the trip and head home. Ironically, the person most likely to die on the trip had become the only person from the group to survive. Which, Yuri coincidentally died in 2013 at the age of 75. Wait, somebody lived? Which is kind of a, I mean, who cares? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, he went home. Shut up, Igor. Maybe I will. Fuck off, Yuri. Maybe I fucking will ask Simon Yagabakatika and had to abandon the trip and head home. Ironically, the person most likely to die on the trip had become the only person from the group to survive. Which, Yuri coincidentally died in 2013 at the age of 75. Which is kind of a, I mean, who cares? <laughs> After he was gone, there was nine. Nine people still continuing on their skiing expedition, waiting to have the time of their life so they can use wood and go down slopes of ice skiing. The trip had been easy, but they had yet to ski far distances and camp in the snow. The group was on track to meet their goal. Oh, it's so creepy. They have, like, photos of the group, and, that, and they all fucking died. According to Dyatlov's itinerary, they intended to reach the tiny village of Vizai. That was eight? Yeah, and he put plus one holding the camera. Tie around February 12th. Leaving Vizai, the group officially went off grid and into the wilderness. Dyatlov promised to send word to the university when they arrived on the 12th, but a telegram from the group never came. Eight days later, on February 20th, a search party was finally released. And on February 25th is when we get our actual incident of what is now known as the Dyatlov Pass. February 25th, an odd scene was found. An abandoned tent was discovered with personal items, food, and equipment inside. Food was laid out as if it was about to be eaten. Ski boots, axes, and equipment were neatly placed on either side of the door of the tent. The crew's cameras, journals, and clothes were stacked and neatly folded and left behind. The tent was found on a remote mountain referred by the Soviets as Height 1079, but the indigenous people of the area called it Kolot Skalk. Or Dead Mountain. That's crazy. The indigenous people are just like, Up there? You mean they went up on Dead Mountain? Mm, I wouldn't do that. But the biggest question began as everything's left behind. Clothes are neatly folded. So are the journals. I mean, everything looks like this is like an active campsite. But the biggest question arose, where did everybody go? After they dug the tent out of the snow, there was numerous slashes found all over the tent. About 100 feet downhill, footprints were found of eight to nine people walking toward the tree line. Weirdly, almost all the footprints showed that the students walked either barefoot or in stockings through the snow. This is already building to be something mm -hmm. crazy. Dude, now, that's fucking creepy. Is there bears? But wouldn't there be, there would be bear footprints and they would be mauled. Active campsite, they're all smart people. 
but now they're finding footprints that are barefoot or in stockings. They're not even wearing their shoes. What the hell could have been? Why? Like, why? One person to be wearing a single ski boot. The search party followed the prints for six to 700 yards, and then the footprints just vanished. The next morning, searchers found the bodies of Krikovansko and Dronskinsko under a tall cedar tree at the edge of the forest. They were found next to a dead fire and only their underwear. But above in the tree, there were broken branches, and on the trunk of the tree, bits of skin and torn cloth were found. Later that day, two more bodies were found, Dyatlov and Kalmogorova. They were farther up the slope, facing the direction of the tent with clenched fists. It appeared that they had died walking back towards the tent. And a few days later... What? Dude, like, what do you think happened? A fifth body was found. It was Slobodin. These fucking pictures are gruesome, which we have to blur them now, but we will have them uncensored and up on Patreon. Feel free to sign up there. Oh my god, there's uncensored photos. I'm looking. I'm looking it up. I'm not showing, but I'm looking it up. Dyatlov Pass Body Photos. Can't show them. Can't show them on Twitch. Can't show them on YouTube. Gotta go look it up. Oh, I want to see, though. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see the dead bodies. Uh, dead body. Dead body photos. I'm not seeing them. I'm not seeing them. I'm just seeing... Oh, there's one. Nope. Nope, there's not one. It's just the same photo he showed. Oh, there's one. It's just a guy frozen. Another guy frozen. Oh, they're all frozen. Okay, that one's brutal. He's like this. Dead. You'll be able to look at the Diatlov Pass pictures free. Don't look on the website. Go through me. After looking at all of the bodies, we finally got into the autopsies of the bodies. People were able to take them off the mountain and see, and the pictures are pretty gruesome. So I will say, viewer discretion advised if you do go look at them because, you know, they're fucking dead bodies. I don't know what just to tell you. Which the autopsy of the first five bodies revealed bizarre results. All five students appeared to have died from hypothermia, but something didn't feel right. Krivanjinesko had blackened fingers and third degree burns on his shin and foot, and inside his mouth, a chunk of flesh from his hand was found. What? Doroshenko. God, you think they ate like, you think they ate like hallucinogens? They, it, it's like they went crazy. Like they ran out of their tent and like fucking just died. Body had burned hair on one side of their head and a charred sock and all the bodies were covered in bruises, abrasions, scratches, and cuts. When they found Slobodin's body, he was revealed to be the one walking around in sock and a boot. His autopsy showed he had also a fractured skull. Following these findings, a homicide investigation was underway. This was led by prosecutor Lev Ivanov. During this time, a seamstress- How much do you have to take to go crazy? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it would ever get to that point either. Uh, like, I know people that have freaked out on mushrooms, but I don't think you would ever run out there and fucking, like, die. And I don't know why they would all take mushrooms in the middle of a wilderness in the winter. That would be just stupid. And seeing that they're all smart people, like, I doubt they would have done that. Just looking around noted... And it would have been in their system. ...that the slashes came from inside the tent. This meant oh. that the people inside were escaping from something. But once again... The... Ah, see, that's just making me think they were freaking the fuck out. What were they, what were they freaking the fuck out about? question arose from what exactly somebody locked them in somehow they were apparently locked in enough to where they felt like they had to slash their way out so realistically i'm thinking that maybe i don't know delirious something crazy where they thought something was trying to get them and they couldn't yeah. get out so they cut through the tent it's very odd especially the idea that they all ran away and they were all affected if it was just one person you could see like oh maybe they some kind of drug was administered some kind of like weird psychosis yeah but it was all of them and i don't think all of them would have taken that or something but it's odd it's all that they all would have showed up so went six to seven hundred feet away from their tent which was like perfectly well managed they had been perfectly documenting what they were doing so far but now it's just like on one random random night there's all these different things that indicate that there was some kind of not only disturbance but a altercation a struggle there was a couple theories early on in the investigation one of them being the gulag escapee theory the area where the bodies were found were close to a few of stalin's prison camps an early theory was that an escaped prisoner encountered these students and brutally murdered them in fact if they yeah but wouldn't that would it, they would that would show up on the fucking autopsy that they were killed 
El Gulag was extremely close, but the Gulag confirmed that no one escaped, and also the fact that everything was left as it was at the campsite ruled this theory out. Which, yeah, yeah it is kind of crazy. That's that a stupid theory. That they were by one of Stalin's prison camps, but still. It doesn't explain, like, why everything was still folded. And also, a group of 9, 20... No, it literally, the way he described the scenario was as if everything was okay... They were just chilling in the tent, right? And randomly, they all just went, we need to fucking get out of here. Slashed the tent and ran out and died. Like, what would make somebody do that? 20-year-olds couldn't overpower one man. Even if someone did get hurt or like, yeah, you got cut up, you would assume that they could handle a person, one escapee. The next theory was that Yuri Yudin did it. Yuri was the only person who knew exactly where the group was heading, and he was also the only person from the group still alive. Many believed his back pain was a ruse. So now the guy who bailed out early, now people are like, what the f*** do you know? And he's like, And what would his motive be to kill them? <laughs> I left because of my back pain. What the fuck am I supposed to do? But when they brought him out to the campsite, he was deeply disturbed by what he saw. And he noticed something that no one else had. Some of the hikers were wearing clothes that, that weren't their own. That is a fucking bombshell. Not only is Yuri seeing all of his friends dead and mutilated. Oh, he'd be the only one that'd be able to say that. Yeah, like he's, oh, John's wearing Jimmy's clothes. Because like you wouldn't know, right? Like unless you were a part of the group, you would be like, why is, why is Chris wearing Jake's clothes. That doesn't... They did pretty much. But now the also the realization of looking, being able to look past the burns, frostbite, the, all the horrible shit. He's also just like, that's not his shirt. That's like his shirt. Like they're swapped. They swapped clothing somehow. That's so, so fucking many freaky. So many super compelling mysteries unfolding. My God. Yuri also had an alibi that he was visiting his parents in his home village after abandoning the trip. This proved to check out and he was cleared of, e of all the investigations. Another theory was Mansi's sacred land theory. The Mansi were native people that lived near the area where the bodies were found. It was thought that the hikers might have stumbled upon a sacred land which angered the Mansi and led to their death. In addition, the group had but two- But they would have been killed and they weren't killed. They died of hypothermia. Two women with them, which could be viewed as even more of an affront because the Mansi don't like women. I know that's not very PC, but the Mansi don't seem to care, all right? But the Mansi were very helpful through the investigation. Mariella for the three. There's a movie, uh, it's called Dead Mountain. They have a movie about this. Hold up, I need to look that the fuck up. I hope it doesn't have shitty reviews. It says it's a TV series. Not a movie. Dead Mountain Show. Yeah, I'm definitely going to finish. I'm about ba to watch that shit if it's good. Hold up. I'm responding to Brooke. All right. Redstone for the sub, low mess fence for the three. Uh, what if they just had a bad trip on acid? Yeah, but that wouldn't... Everybody has a bad trip on acid, runs out and fucking freezes to death. You'd think one guy would live. You know, lopsided Hannah and Cray for the sub. I mean, they were very Hear me out, the guy who had back pains put drugs in their food, but that would show up in an autopsy. Communicated with the detectives, you know, I, th there was really no reason that they were trying to hide anything. They seemed like they were just doing nothing but helping. Also, they said that the land was not sacred at all, and it was actually viewed as barren, useless stretch of land. The night of the group was supposedly killed, many Mansi reported seeing a huge fireball shoot across the sky. A huge fireball. What does that mean? It almost makes it seem like a rocket, like a missile or something, like some kind of thing like that. Or an alien. Are we getting aliens involved? Yeah, but what would... Uh, damn. I, I, that, if you're getting into aliens, now you're getting into the conspiracy theory of an alien, aliens being in the Atlov Pass. Oh, my God. Of now? 
a fireball in the sky, like a shooting, or like a meteor, maybe. Could be. This was the last photo captured by Yuri Konkrishenshank film roll. It was a different Yuri. There was two Yuris. This was the guy that was actually part of the group, and this was one of the last photos, which is like a blurry kind of image showing something, but it is, it, it does look like a bright light. Don't know what it is exactly. Not the best photo quality, but if I was a betting man, if I had to be legitimate about it, I'd say it's a UFO, which also leads the question, did they The see government said they were real? Yeah, I know something that they weren't supposed to. Once again, the question still arised. What happened? So I threw a lot at you. So yeah, maybe the Russian government killed him. Recap. Nine experienced skiers supposedly fled the tent in the middle of the night. During a blizzard, mind you. Don't know if I said that. It was during a blizzard. It was also negative 20 degree weather, and most of them were not wearing clothes, just underwear. By the way, the clothes that they were found with were not theirs. They were other people's. They were either bare feet or in socks. Some people had burns. Others had fractures. And also, these people were all acutely aware of the consequences of the snow and weather and what would happen if they left their tent during these conditions. These were well-rounded people. They weren't, you know, they had planned for this. This was all planned. There were only nine noticeable footprints in the snow, suggesting they were the only ones around with whatever took place. So far, only five bodies have been found and four are still missing. In May, wow. the snow finally begins to melt. And a few months later, a Mansi hunter found the remaining missing four bodies in a makeshift snow den, 250 feet away from the cedar tree where two other bodies were originally found. Pieces of tattered clothing were strewn around the area. Another search team uncovered a piece of flesh. The excavation uncovered the four remaining victims all lined together in a rocky stream bed under 10 feet of snow. The damage found suggested they were beaten by a large blunt object which now because they oh found okay so they didn't the all just get people, there was oh my god i thought it was just gonna be like they all froze to death somebody hurt the them three of the four bodies had catastrophic injuries the medical examiner said the damage to the bodies were similar to quote an impact of an automobile at high speed and that's what? Crazy from somebody from 1959 you know what i mean somebody's just like i could only equate it to one of those large metal beasts driving as fast as it could. <laughs> Brignoli's skull was fractured and smashed so bad that pieces of the bone were driven into his brain. Both Zolotoryov and Dubininia chests were crushed and had multiple broken ribs. And both of those people with, you know, the broken ribs and the crushed skull and all that kind of stuff, they were both missing their eyes. Both of them, no eyes. Dubinia's autopsy also revealed they had a massive hemorrhage in their heart. What the fuck? And they still ain't know what did this? Dubinia's tongue also was missing from her body. The odd thing was, though, even though all that is pretty odd, was that none of the bodies had any external penetrating wounds. What the fuck is happening? What is going on? Looking closer, some of the victims were wearing clothes from other bodies. Some items were cut off and others appeared to be just taken. Lab tests also found that several of these clothing items were emitted high levels of radiation. And it is noted that the radiation must have been extremely higher since the bodies were exposed to running water for months before being found. At the funerals of the deceased, which they were open caskets, Wow. If you saw the photos, you would probably be like, let's let's close the caskets. We can just remember them from our memories and not have to have this horrible fucking nightmare. Many people noticed the bodies were withered and orange. This is a mark of radiation poisoning, and they also had third degree burns all on Ah, uh, but didn't they work at a nuclear plant? How the fuck do they have radiation poisoning? This is pissing me off. This is pissing me off. There's too many fucking things that don't make sense. On their bodies. Three months into his investigation on May 28th, the prosecutor, Ivanov, abruptly just shut down the investigation. He was just like, I'm done. We're done. No, no. We're done. Don't ask me questions. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably an accident. Avalanche. 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 Soviet authorities ruled six deaths came from hypothermia and three came from physical trauma. Ivanov also claimed it was not his job to determine exactly what happened, but whether a crime had been committed. He concluded a crime had not been committed and homicide was not a factor in this case. And Ivanov ended his report on this, and I quote, It should be concluded that the cause of the hacker's demise was an overwhelming force, which they were not able to overcome. Was that a pretty good Russian accent? Perfect. Thank you. This vague summonation maddened the families and Soviets alike, and it continues to mystify the Dyatlov researchers to this day. And after the investigation closed, all the files, photographs, and journals from the investigation were classified, and the area around the dead mountain became off limits to skiers for years. The exact area in the mountains where the young skiers were headed for, but never reached, was named. Yo, imagine a YouTuber going there one day and being like staying at Dyatlov Pass and then dying. Dyatlov Pass. Kind of crazy. So now we have a thing about these bodies with so many mysterious things happening. Granted, this was 1959. It's been a long time ago. Who knows what a avalanche, I bet. But wouldn't there be a showing that 
an avalanche had happened. Exactly happened. It's been shrouded in mystery for years. And these are just some of the theories that we have found online. A weapons test theory. The skiers died because they had stumbled into an area where secret weapons were being tested and were killed to leave no witnesses. This is what and many of the radiation. Like, how the fuck is an avalanche going to give you radiation? The skiers believe, and the radiation on the clothes and the time period really makes this theory strong in people's minds. because That makes that sense. Maybe because of the time, people came across something that they shouldn't have, you know, and the government itself killed the skiers. And that's also why Ivanov also, or the, the investigator, also just had to abruptly shut down the case so quick. Because, who knows, maybe some kind of guys came in, they're like, You better shut off case. You hear? Okay, sorry, I will. I doubt it was that casual, but you know. Then there was the American spy theory. Others thought that skin group was killed by mercenaries, probably American spies. That seems a bit James Why? Bondish, and I think that was probably just inspired by the James Bond era films. I don't know how much about that one. And then we go back to Yuri Yudin's theory, which continuously said that the deaths of the classmates was not natural. Yuri was like, this is not a natural thing. And in 2013, before he died, he declared that everyone had been taken from the tent, held at gunpoint, and murdered. He believed that Dubanya had her tongue cut out by the killers for being outspoken and probably because she was a woman that's just history that's not me saying that women have gotten a bad rap in history i'm a male feminist imagine, be, imagine leaving though and being that guy being yuri you're like oh my back hurts and then fucking five days later they're like yeah they're all dead the problem with these theories is that the snow does not lie. It would have been impossible to erase the signs of people and their equipment in the snow. Also, like he would have been as much with information them. has been declassified over the years, there has not been any evidence to suggest that there was a secret weapons base or an errant missile exploding in the area. Then we have the mystery man KGB theory. Zola Troyov. The theory is that he was KGB and that connection inevitably got the group killed. There's a book published in Russia that claims that Zola Troyov had two other skiers with KGB agents on a special assignment to meet the group of a CIA operatives to furnish them with fake information. Samples of clothing contaminated with radioactive isotopes were to be offered as bait. The thought is that the CIA agents discovered the deception and killed the group and then staged the scene. So now we have people being like CIA agents trying to find nuclear testing stuff yeah. to figure out they're being cheated so then they kill people and redress them. And then there's an avalanche theory. An avalanche struck the tent causing injuries and forced the group to cut their way out and head into the forest for shelter. The slope was determined that to... That makes sense but the, it's just the radiation is the only thing that would disprove that. Low to generate an avalanche though with high enough winds that could have changed things but there was no avalanche debris found. Also the damage done to the three bodies were so debilitating that there was no way that they could have gotten to the stream bed if they sustained them in the tent. And there were no signs of the bodies being dragged. And then my personal favorite theory, which is the Yeti theory. The most entertaining theory and quite popular is that the group was attacked by a Yeti. A major contributing factor to the theory is because of the final photograph found in the Theobald Briganol's camera, which reveals a dark figure advancing through the snowy forest. Okay, that Apparently is the group was joking about Yetis a few hours before they had died. There was also a satirical article about Yetis seen in the area on the Ural mountains found at the campsite which I fuck imagine being a part of the friend group and you're like yeah yetis don't exist and then you fucking die to a yeti it's a very mysterious photo but it could have also been that could have, aren't yetis white not brown that would be big fun they were staging it and he took a photo of it who knows tigers brown bears a more realistic version of the yeti theory the state some of the bodies were left in especially the ones with crushed chest and those missing their eyes and tongue led some to believe animals got into the campers if a bear wandered into the campsite it could be a reason why everyone fled in the snow without their clothes on seems a little more realistic but then again i feel like you wouldn't see the bear tracks there's just no other tracks that's why i'm like are you sure? Yeah. The bad vibrations theory. Writer and filmmaker Donnie Ekar suggests that a high winds passing over the mountains created infrasound and that this induced such terror that the skiers fled the tent and then paranoia took hold and the cold escalated events leading to their odd deaths. If they ran out from fear. That that actually makes a lot of fucking sense because them running out of fear. Like, why? Why would they leave their tent? Like, if an animal's around the camp, why the fuck would they get out? Why weren't they wearing any clothes, though? You gotta run out quick. Paradoxal undressing occurs during fatal hypothermia, where the person suffering from it feels the body become way too hot, on fire even, and they start to take off their clothes because in their mind they're burning alive, but really their body is freezing to death. But all of them though. That's what I'm saying. Is all of them had that happen simultaneously at the same time? I don't know. The heat theory. Carbon monoxide poisoning from the heater they used. This could cause the group to not be thinking clearly and make bad choices. Though, it doesn't really explain anything else that happened. You know, the bludgeoning, all that other stuff, right? Or the Mansi mushroom 
theory, which the Mancies sometimes hung hallucinogenic mushrooms off trees to dry. There's a theory that no. the skiers ate the mushrooms without realizing and succumbed to sudden madness. Which let me tell oh you. Oh my if, god, because if you ate if you ate hallucinogenic mushrooms like they were regular mushrooms, you would you would eat so many. If you've ever seen the movie Climax, that's a movie about a theater group. Someone spikes the punch at a theater group with LSD or something, and it causes absolute chaos, and it turns into this very violent thing. You never know. Could be some weird hallucinogenic. I mean, especially if they did it all as a group. Maybe they made some kind of tea out of it. Who knows? Could be very deal. And then they sit there and they gouge their own eyes out or something like that. But I feel like you would see that in their hands or something. 30 years later, Prosecutor Ivanov, now retired, published an article claiming that when he was compiling his investigative reports in 1959, he had been pressured to not include his views on what he thought had happened. And you already know where we're going with this. The title of his article? The Enigma of the Fireballs. That's a sick article name. Holy sh His article goes on to claim that skiers have been killed by heat rays or fireballs caused by UFO. Oh, baby aliens! He recalls finding it suspicious that he and his colleagues were even asked to test the victim's items for radiation. And later, when he wrote a letter asking his- Yeah, why would they be asked to test for radiation? That just seems so fucking stupid. I'd be like, these guys died in the fucking- in the wilderness. Superiors, why radiation was relevant, and he was told that the deaths were <gasps> accidental. By this time, the official files had been released, and it had become one of the most celebrated mysteries of the Soviet era. And it has spawned tons of theories to what actually happened. And the Russian Prosecutor's General's Office official count for theories is 75. 75 official theories. Wow. That's a lot. The constant continuous theme of this video is what really happened. There are multiple theories with motives. What do y'all think happened? I think the mushroom one makes a lot of sense. It's just, I think the mushroom one makes a lot of sense. I think the noise one makes a lot of sense. With the, the, that would freak them Done out. With evidence. Something to make them run out of the tent. But many of them seem to run into partial issues. What about multiple theories converging and, and occurring together? Or maybe some unknown supernatural force got to them. But I have to ask, what do you think happened to them out there? The official answer that no one's happy with is in 2019, Russia opened the case back up and they officially marked it as an avalanche. Which could explain cutting open their tent to try to crawl out because the other parts may be sealed up, but it doesn't explain the fractures to my opinion. It doesn't explain why- It could explain the fractures if like something else hit them, but it wouldn't explain the radiation at all. The eyeballs are gone. Why the tongue's missing? Yeah. Why they're all in different directions and why some of them were up in a tree, there's skin up in trees. And the mushrooms would explain why they just went in different directions. Like they just panicked. They're all switching clothes. Could it be that they just threw on whatever was closest around them to try to stay warm? Or was something more at play? If my imagination could run wild, I'd like to think that it was a supernatural force somehow. I don't know how. I just don't it's, understand it's the, the radiation option. portion. And it also makes me feel like, I don't know, at peace with them a little bit. Like if something did supernatural happen to them, it's something that they totally could not have controlled and it wasn't yeah. man-made. It was just like this in inexplicable force, which is the same with an avalanche or whatever else. But these deaths just look so harrowing. And honestly, the Dyatlov Pass is one of the <laughs> craziest mysteries I've ever heard. So I hope something more goes into it. I'm sure that this avalanche answer from 2019 is not satisfactory to a lot of people. So I'm curious to see what happens. Without further ado, that was the Dyatlov Pass. I hope you all- That was a fucking goaded video. LaBailey for the sub. Dude, I love when he does like the mystery shit like that. Um, The YouTuber Lemino did it on a while back, so I'll give a brief de description. Oh God, it's like four paragraphs. Radiation pre present on the bodies and clothes is not unexplainable as the clothes are believed to have belonged to Krivonoshkenko and Dyatlov who worked at nuclear facilities. I, then I think the mushroom theory makes a fucking hell of a lot of sense. I like, especially if this is like the 60s or whenever the hell this happened. All right. Chat, we're going to call that there. That was a W fucking stream. I'm going to post on YouTube like right when I end. I'll be live tomorrow, 4.30 EST. We're going to be doing the second to last Minecraft uh, modded uh, stream this season. Uh, probably going to end up doing uh, a horror mod pack for like a stream or two uh, another day. But that'll be like a month from now. Tuesday, we're going to be doing uh, an FMV game, some random games, maybe a scary game. Uh, Wednesday is going to be itch.io horror, Roblox horror, and escape the backwards with Max finishing that. Thursday, I'm getting a tattoo, so I'm not going to be streaming. Friday is going to be Reacts. Next Saturday is going to be VR. Next Sunday is Reacts. Next, next Monday is going to be the last Minecraft modded stream. Chat, hope you all had fun. Uh, I had a fun time streaming. Hope you guys had a fun time watching. We had a great chat right on. He's had a lot of people on the fucking stream today, and we had some great ass reacts. Uh, outside of that, hope you all had fun, uh, and I will see y'all soon. Let's raid fucking... Asian Jeff.
but yeah i'll catch y'all then hope y'all had fun uh and i'll see y'all tomorrow uh we are going to raid in 